Futures downside once again this morning as we get going into a holiday shortened week this week. Keep in mind, Friday going to be a holiday coming up. Uh, so enjoy it. Lots to uh, understand this morning. We have tech downside, semiconductors downside, uh, Tesla and Rivian downside. Lucid's up 20%. They just got a billion dollars from uh, Saudis. Uh, once again, we'll touch on that this morning, but both Tesla and Rivian uh, with separate downgrades once again. So more uh, pressure possibly for those two. Uh, semiconductors, as I mentioned, under a little bit of pressure on these China headlines this morning. Uh, China going to uh, not allow U.S.-based semiconductors and government computers going forward. Uh, a little bit of housing data coming up uh, closer to 10 o'clock this morning. We'll also get a whole long, long list once again this week of Fed speakers coming through. It's Monday, March 25th, 2024. TraderTV.Live starts now. There's a look at uh, Lucid to start things off this morning. Nice move here so far. Pre-market up about 21% now on this news. Again, some uh, debt coming from um, the Saudis, about a billion dollars worth of uh, funding for Lucid coming through once again. So uh, nice start to the day for them. Boeing also higher here. David uh, Calhoun, CEO, going to step down at the end of the year. Chairman of the board also out for Boeing, rightfully so, after what a mess this year has been for. Uh, BA, that's the way the overall market's setting up here. We are downside in the pre-market, pretty big way. That all kicked off on that uh, China headline that came through. Again, some restrictions going to be put in place on uh, the side of China now. To this point, it's been the U.S. restricting sending semiconductors to China. Now China just says, that's okay, we're not going to use them anyways. But again, this is just government uh, computers over in China going to be restricted to um, China-made uh, semiconductors. So AMD, Intel, NVIDIA, all downside. I was just reading through this note as well. Happy Monday, by the way. Likewise. How was your weekend? It was okay. I'm still half asleep. <laughs> <laughs> More coffee required. Um, I was just reading through this note on uh, Google, uh, Qualcomm, and a few others going to team up to take on that CUDA software, specifically the software that NVIDIA has, I guess for lack of a better term, handcuffed yeah. everyone into using when they're using their GPUs. So a little bit of pressure on that end for NVIDIA as well. Yeah, and Jensen made no bones about it in that conference last week. He was talking about CUDA or CUDA, however it's pronounced, and how it basically connects all the different uh, GPUs together, allows them to become more efficient. They can work on multiple problems at the same time. That's all supposed to be part of the ecosystem, and uh, the GPUs are kind of, you know, not even uh, half as good without it, Brendo. So we'll have to wait and see how we do. But to build on your point with respect to that China, um, CPU ban. This is uh, looks like going to be, you know, one of the first tit for tat exchanges. You yeah. ban me, I ban you. We know Huawei as well as SMIC, which is their biggest CPU maker, have really turning things up ever since yeah. the Biden administration ban. Yeah, we'll see what um, how that plays out for TikTok, maybe because yes. that that was the last thing that was on the docket for the U.S. side. So. Uh, more to come, possibly, on that end. Again, it's uh, Google teaming up with Intel, Qualcomm, and a few other uh, smaller companies to look at developing software, specifically, not necessarily the GPUs, but software that uh, NVIDIA has been tying everyone into with using their own GPUs. But a uh, lot to get into here this morning. Happy Monday. Neil's still on vacation. Obi back with us this morning. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Obi, Obi's here, Obi's back. You're back from the United States, which was, uh, yeah. how was that? It was good. Good weather was good? Oh, weather was, uh, weather was all right. A little, little rainy, but uh, it was still, still a good experience for sure. Yeah, it was a little rainy, wasn't it? Yeah, we were, um, actually, I think we were okay here. We got some snow, obviously, as you saw. Well, oh yeah, well, you left Friday morning. Yes. You didn't get the weather, it was just rain. Well, you saw the snow here now. I it was, mean, it was a little more raining on Saturday. Yeah, we had quite the snowstorm on Friday, Friday wasn't there. Too bad. But welcome, everybody. Yeah, it's nice to see Lucid getting that money. A billion's always nice to get there. A uh, nice little upside move. I actually put Boeing on the watch list today. I think we'll have to watch out for that. Um, we'll just try to short Intel, as we've been doing for a while. AMD's going to be on our mind. NASDAQ down half a percent here today. I don't know. I'm a little bit... I was watching... I, have, I mean, I have... Looking at these imbalances here, Fisker, still, I mean, still pretty bad. 
Um, yeah, no, we were looking at you. You had some trade ideas, and we'll go over some Reddit uh, trading here today. You're under. You brought up the anchored VWAP, so good for you know, good good note for that. We'll talk some about Reddit today. Um, yeah, Bitcoin sixty seven thousand, not too bad. We had a little bit of a scare there last week. We went into the low 60s. Oh, yeah. Um, and then Ethereum touched 3,000 pretty much exactly on, which was a little scary there for a minute. I wish I would have been sitting on the bid to pick some of that up. Uh, but, yeah, we had Brankles fill in. Yeah. I know you heard about that. You didn't yeah, yeah. get a chance to watch. No, I, I was flying out as, uh, as uh, I think, around, like, 9, 9.30 in the morning. So I, I tuned in for, like, a few minutes, and I was like, all right, I got to come back and watch the whole thing here. That was a lot of fun, so. Yeah. All right, good. Um, so you, you have read it. And what, give me one other name that's on your mind. Uh, Nike Earnings Day 2. Nike Earnings Day 2. Okay, there it is. Sure. So we will be looking at some consumer discretionary here today, guys. Um, pretty interesting day. Anyways, busy day for uh, Nike back on Friday. We'll touch on that. Totally forgot about Reddit. We'll have a look at uh, Reddit. Just notice this, though. So, uh, there goes uh, Lucid downside. So we just uh, dropped a little bit. Uh, giving some of that back. Yeah, you guys mentioned this uh, quickly. Here's Boeing. Day high is essentially right now 195. Uh, coming into play, if anyone's uh, joining a little late here or uh, just getting up possibly this morning, uh, CEO Calhoun on actually on CNBC right now uh, talking about this decision to uh, step aside. So uh, CEO gone end of the year. Chairman of the board also uh, gone as well. So I mean, based off this action right now, oh, yeah. much needed oh, yeah. for Boeing. Yeah, the market's really liking this, Brando. And I don't mean make fun of this because somebody's going to lose their job here, obviously. But uh, to build on that point, United Airlines also under investigation by the Federal Aviation Authority. They're investigating multiple incidents this week, all connected, sadly, to Boeing airplanes, whether the 737 MAX or the 777-200. Uh, so they're also in focus today. Uh, just seeing this as well, commercial airplane president and CEO Stan Deal also will retire at the end of the year. So three executives out the door here, guys, for Boeing. Yeah, I mean, that's um, obviously it's good news here for the stock as the stock is starting to go back up to the upside. I think Boeing, that's probably exactly what they needed. We talked about that. Shout out to Brittany Grant and shout out to everybody that sort of took, you know, what I mentioned or what we mentioned or just this key level into um, watch because coming down there and buying, you know, you get a lot of bad news just washed out here, you know, and then we come right into a level of possible support down there at 170, 175. What a great trade that was. Go looks like it will be for Boeing. I mean, and I think that that's kind of what they need, right? The management has taken them down this aisle, unfortunately, and it's caused them to have a pretty horrible reputation. And now they can change that with new management. They'll come out. They'll probably try to change a few things. They'll see about that Spirit Airlines. They were thinking about taking those guys over. They had that, um, I don't know, what was it? Was it 60 days, 90 days, or even a little bit more than that uh, for the FAA to sort of get their safety uh, regulations in check there and, and, and sort of a plan to move forward. This, this is good. I, I like it. I wrote down 192 here, back to 193. That's where we have VWAP right now. I think we trade this long. Uh, the break, I liked 192. I guess it must have been on a 20-minute chart. Yeah, right into here. So 192 was the high on Friday, and we, you know, we didn't see any better than that. And now we took it out. So to me, you know, if we were over here, I'd be looking at a break. So a little bit of a pullback here for Boeing, up three and a half percent. Generally speaking, Obi, when you get management changes, when a company that hasn't been doing that well, you will get a spark in the stock. Whether or not that changes anything directionally here for where Boeing's gonna be in the next six, eight, 12 months, I'm not sure, but I like it. I think it's a big company. It's a big, big bellwether stock. We talked about its monopolistic right. characteristics. Yep. So we'll go there. I like Disney too. Disney's moving around today. Yeah, no, I, I, I like that. I like that look. I pulled it up on the on this chart here. I only had one line at that 224. Um, I, th I think that uh, that news kind of came in in and around here. You can see that Orville happening uh, at the beginning of Janu January, right before earnings. But uh, yeah, no, it's been it's been fading off quite uh, quite aggressively since then. A little bit of a reversion, but yeah, I like that 197 as uh, Sean definitely pointed out. Um, a little bit of a shelf here at that 200 as well. A little bit of psychological level, I would assume. And yeah, we're getting a bit of a reversion, and with the uh, with the positive catalyst as you just pointed out, potentially positive, forward looking, right? With the change. Yeah, in I think. Yeah, right? I mean, catching a bit of a bid. Yeah, good. Back to the desk. 
Crazy. All right, let's uh, touch on Lucid here. Uh, trying to bounce, actually. It held that 320. Uh, so we are getting a little bit of a pop here, if uh, anyone missed it. A billion dollars. Uh, I mean, you and I were just talking about this coming from the um, Saudi Investment <laughs> Fund once again. They, I, I was going to say they're like tripling down, but it's probably like the fifth or sixth time they've gone yeah. to the well here for Lucid. I don't know. I think this is kind of bad, not good to have an unlimited amount of money. Kind of, you know, doesn't give you that I have to make it or I die type uh, environment, right? Like Rivian has to, uh, Fisker, some other ones. If you constantly have this source of money that can get you out of trouble, what motivation do you really have to get it right? Uh, but that's just my opinion. Look, anyway, this uh, there is this uh, affiliate of the Saudi Public Investment Fund goes by the name of IR Third Investment Company. They're the ones who are going to be throwing a billion dollars at these convertible preferred stocks. We'll have to see how they do, but the stock up right now. Yeah, so it's AR Third Investment Company, which I guess they're buying shares from, uh, directly from AR Third Investment Company, which will be, as you said, these preferred shares that um, will turn into these preferred shares. But uh, regardless of the structure of it, still uh, yet another billion here for Lucid today. Yeah, I, I think it's great news. I mean, you're getting more money. You're able, able to stay afloat. I mean, it's better that than sort of raising capital by diluting your shares. So I think this is exactly the kind of investment that obviously flailing stocks need because now they can have capital. Someone's believing in them. I mean, a billion dollars is not chump change. We'll see if they can finally get their act together. I would obviously, if I was long, we talked about this on the podcast and we might talk about this uh, last week with Neil about trying to buy Fisker down here at like 12, 13 cents and see if you get a pop up into like 17 or 18 cents and then you sell. So I, I, you know, I wonder if this is that opportunity right now that you're going to get if you were trying to bottom pick some of these levels, which has been a good little level there, man. I Rob, mean, we hit 275 it- back in uh, January. And then we hit it again back there in March right now. And now you're getting that bump over the 50 period moving average. We'll see. We'll, I think we have to pay for shorts on this one. So, I, you know, we'll go in there and have a quick look to see if that's the case. But honestly, I, I want to try along. Let's just see what happens. Well, um, the short float. Oh, I actually don't have it up. I'll double check what that short float is. I'll get my trade ideas, which uh, I actually was did not start it up yet. We'll get that up and going as we do have Michael Noss coming on. So that's one of the key things that I always check. You see how ingrained I am? There's so many different methods to check short float. And I just yeah. immediately say, like, oh, my God, I, ha- I have to open up my trade ideas. So here it is right here. So let me just double check LCID, what the short float is right now. Yeah, there it is right there. So you're actually oh. a little bit larger than I would have thought Damn. at 30. So you're right there at 30%. Um, this is another feature here. You can click on the news profile. There's the story as well in the Trade Ideas platform. Um, so there it is, the affiliative PIF investing in there, that $1 billion. So, yeah, look, I, I, I think it's good. You know, I don't think it's bad news. I, I don't see that angle there, but we'll, we'll wait to hear about holding levels. I mean, honestly, this is where we will put on, you know, less of a macro hat and more just of a technical level. Because if you break back into $3, into this 290, where there's that little bit of a shelf there, and then I look at the 50 period moving average, which seems to be near in and around $3, I I feel like if you can't hold that on this kind of news, then you just bail on the trade. So dip buys into $3 looks pretty good. And then because, and maybe Michael can talk about this, because he always talks about short flow plays and things like that. I mean, if you can base out and start to get going, then some of that 30% is going to get caught off guard uh, on the short. And then look at this. Where's their out? 370, 375, four dollars. You know, so a little bit of juice into this name. I mean, to get to four dollars now, you're going to have to be up like you know nearly 50% or so, probably 40x percent. So watch out for that play. But hey, it could happen. You ever trade short floats? Yeah. Do you? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not not. I mean. Not recent, but like I remember I was trading uh, them a little bit more frequently. Um, again, when this, this name I'm kind of familiar with, the right. CCIV days. Um, mm-hmm. Big trade back then off of, uh, off of that $10 shelf. And uh, yeah, getting a little charged up on this uh, $1 billion injection from uh, the Saudi oil fund, this EV here today. So yeah, definitely uh, interesting, uh, interesting price action there. Um, doing some Arvel in the pre-market as well. Let's take a quick look left. I, did not act- I didn't actually kind of uh, pr- uh, look at this 
ticker in the morning. I think the news just just came out. It seems uh, when is this candle? Yeah, it's eight a.m. Right eight a.m. Eight a.m. is uh, is that candle reaction right there? So just looking left right away. Let's see what we see here. Um, Three eighty, kind of this uh, consolidation zone might be interesting. Sellers kind of came in here as well. It happened to be earnings day as well. So nice little confluence with that uh, earnings price action from February on Lucid. Let's see what we do with this price action today. (laughs) All right, let's bring in Michael Noss, CMT over at Trade Ideas, get a look at Uh, a few interesting names to kick off the week. Uh, A few ideas, Mr. Noss. Happy Monday. Um, Happy Monday. We'll touch on the uh, short float side of things uh, today in the sense that we're still kind of grinding higher in the overall market uh, since we've gone through a whole bunch of different areas of the market over the past couple of weeks. But, you know, we we talked a little bit even last week about the the idea of rotation and money going from, you know, semiconductors or, or tech in general into other areas of the market. This can fall almost into that idea on a short term basis. Yeah, absolutely. And it was funny, I was in the green room and Sean said, hey, maybe Mike will talk about some short float stuff. So I promise I had this prepared before then. So I don't know if Sean's uh, taking a peek at the doc that I send over. But yeah, we're going to talk a lot about that because, you know, I've mentioned the rotation theory and different sectors to look at. And we've gone over that for the last few weeks. And those have been doing great. But as uh, Brendan was actually just saying, another kind of sector, the way I look at it in the market is these heavily shorted names. And the way I look at it and the way I want to kind of focus on these heavily shorted names is with my first chart of the S&P 500 is that if we're going to just continue to grind like this, that blue line I have is just us breaking out to new all time highs last week. Again, if we're just going to continue to grind like this, then eventually all of the people who are short pretty much everything (laughs) have to cover at some point. So um, we have a bunch of short float filters in trade ideas. And as always, use Trader TV 20 on checkout and save yourself 20% off. The idea is with heavily short float names for those who are new to the concept of a short squeeze is that you have to borrow your shares in order to go short them. And to do that, you need to go to a broker and you need to pay a fee. And and the longer you hold that short position uh, from a swing trading point of view, you have to pay uh, an interest rate. And you have to pay an interest rate, I think, daily uh, that compounds into a, a pretty high rate. So eventually, especially if you're wrong, you have to cover those shares. So what I do when I'm scanning for short float names is I don't care about the names that are heavily shorted that have sold off a lot because those shorts are are happy. You know, think AMC at new all time lows. Um, those shorts, they, they're not worried. You know, they, they can just hold on to those forever. If AMC doubles, they're probably still in a good position. So I want names that are holding um, high near uh, high bases and. I'm looking to see if those are going to move higher and that will make these shorts cover. So they were just talking about there in Lucid, this change in news may cause a short covering rally because all of the shorts that were, you know, fat and happy and loving their short before may end up being a little bit nervous. So the next slide I have is just the scan. As always, you can hit me up. You can go to uh info at trade-ideas.com and you can get this scan. I have it kind of uh, saved for the support people so they'll know what I'm talking about when I've done this presentation. But the idea here is pretty simple. We have two main filters I want to focus on. One is the short float percentage. And then the other is a proprietary one that we have in trade ideas where we just call it the score. And the score ranks the stock basically on how it looks technically. The stronger it is technically, the higher the score ranking is. And the reason I love combining these two things is for what I just talked about before, where I don't want the short float names that are hitting new all-time lows, that's not interesting to me. I want the short float names that are holding up and they're doing well and they're pushing higher because that's what's going to cause these shorts to have to cover. Shorts covering is buying. So anytime you can find a forced buy condition in a stock, sometimes you can get pretty wild moves. So this scan is simply looking for that has to have a high short float rate and it has to have a pretty decent score from a technical standpoint, which is mostly a trend score. So it's saying, hey, this stock is at least for the short term in an uptrend. 
So I've got some ideas for you. First one is Carvana. We all know uh, has quite the history of short squeezing. It's done it a couple times now. And ever since what I've liked from this, ever since it's short squeeze off the bottom, the short float hasn't really gone down. It's still, you can always see in the, the top of our screen, we have the short float right on our charts now. This one's at 35%. So still, a third, more than a third of this entire float is lent out short. And these people at some point have to cover. And we hit a low of, I think, like 10 bucks on this stock. And it's all the way up to $85. And this blue line I've just drawn in is these two recent highs that it's had. If it gets above that, at some point, these guys have got to get out of this short. And that could cause, again, another push on this name that was basically bankrupt or or priced for bankruptcy at some point, and it looks like the shorts got this one dead wrong. Uh, next one here is LUNR. Not too sure what this one is, but you can see the massive move. So I'm always looking for some reason for the shorts to be nervous. And that move that took place a couple months ago went from, I think, $2 to 12 this would have been all over, you know, a day trader's watch list. But now that it's come down and it's put in this rounded bottom, I say it all the time. I've been trained to buy smiley faces and sell frowny faces. That's starting to look like a little bit of a smiley face with, again, another 34% short float. So one in three shares are lent out there somewhere and have to cover. So if we can break out of this base higher, that's what I like the look of that one. That's around seven bucks a share, give or take. I think worst case scenario, if it gets under five, then you're wrong and you got to go. Uh, next one here is SYM, a symbolic, sim symbiotic company. Again, I'm a technician, uh, not a fundamental guy. 33% short float on this one. I want to draw your attention to the chart on the bottom left, which is actually the monthly chart. We have this feature in Trade Ideas, a picture and picture chart. So I always have the long-term time frame in mind when I'm taking these trades. And this one from its IPO is up 320% and a third of the shares are, are short. So you can see that we essentially know that unless they shorted around that $60 high, that these guys are underwater, they're hurt, and at some point they're going to have to turn to cover. On the long-term daily chart, I've got that big smiley face, and then we have this little downtrend line that I draw, and we're breaking that now. That's around $47, $48 a share. So if we get some movement over yesterday's high, that's what I like to look on that one for. And last but not least is Wayfair. You look at the monthly chart, you know, yes, the shorts I have been winning on this one for a long time. This was a $250 stock at some point, and it's got hammered down to about 60 bucks. But also on that monthly chart in the bottom, you can see probably a year, year and a half of just sideways action. I know uh, I've talked about this a lot, and on the nighttime show, I've talked about this a lot with Sean, this idea of stage analysis where you have these accumulation zones that happen sometimes out of these bear markets where the stock will base for months or years, and then when it finally breaks, it might be time to start to stage one uptrend. And it kind of looks like that's what we're seeing. So we've got 26% of this stock short, we have this nice base going on that's between about $50 and $70 a share. If we can get back up to that $70 a share, I think this one might be uh, to take a shot on Wayfair. The ticker's just W. And just to see if, again, a fifth of the shares, or no, sorry, a quarter of the shares are lent out there short. So if they have to change, then they have to change, and they've got to buy to get out of that position to change to a more neutral stance. Now, I want to make sure that, you know, I'm just clear on the on the idea behind this. You don't just find stocks that are heavily shorted and buy them and then hope there's a short squeeze. You need to find you need to find the point in which there's going to be a lot of stop orders for institutions that the institutions are going to be in pain. And again, completely unplanned. But I think that lucid example is a good one where you have a change in some sort of fundamental event that's occurred. If people are short that name, then that's the change in fundamentals or the change in technicals is when they have to go, okay, now I got to call my broker. I got to get out of this position that creates force buying, which again, hopefully creates this kind of um, momentum short squeeze where more buying creates more buying and so on. Well said. Uh, great start to the week. Lots of good ideas there. Uh, Mr. Noss, as you mentioned, we'll be back with Sean on the recap after yep. uh, the close tonight. We'll see you then. Talk to you then. Yes, I will see you then, uh, Mr. Michael Nasa. No.
I did not see his deck pre-show. He sends in a note to Brendan. They discuss what's going on. We only talked about that because of short float. He's kind of come on the show a couple times, talked about that. Um, and then we had that news on Lucid. So, like, how perfect was that? One stock that gets traded a lot in our chat, and he nailed it right away, with, was Carvana. I mean, I... You know, forget about, you know, what, what their business model is. We, we can look at cars. We know EV sales have been pretty bad. But used cars, you know, seems to have worked out. The model seems to be working right now. Oh, that sounds like a real nice slurp in my ear right there. That was pretty cool. Um, and, then, and then we had a huge move up right through 80 bucks. We held these levels, and now you're trying to take out the highs once again. So for me, the name to look at would be Carvana. I really think that this one's about to loop up here. That's a nice smiley face looking to take it out. Um, and then I, I agree. I mean, you know, we'll, that, maybe that's what we'll do in the, after, in the recap show is we'll look back at some of these and see how they actually traded uh, today. But it was a nice move up for Lucid, and we're going to see here with news what this name wants to do. So that's two high short float names that have catalysts there today. We'll see if Lucid, so Carvana breaking the highs and then Lucid with this news about the billion dollar investment. So I think both these names are definitely worth it. And I'm right now into our um, trading uh, back end here and trying to make sure that we have uh, pay for shorts available for both these names. Yeah, um, I think, uh, I think uh, um, Mr. Noss pointed out some, uh, some decent tickers there. And uh, yeah, I like that Wayfair, Wayfair look as well. A little bit of a yeah, curl a happening. And I was looking back at some of these earnings. This is an hourly chart here. Um, an interesting kind of uh, action here. Look at this. This, this earnings has like a significant amount of volume as well. Um, uh, and they reported quite well, 128%. Uh, what earnings was this? This was in August of 23, a little bit of a head and shoulders uh, action going on here. And then I think he pointed out that 70 level as well. Understandable if this is kind of short and we get past, uh, we get past some of these prices that printed on a really good earnings, I think, yeah, shorts might be getting a little bit sweaty there. All right, let's go over and to the screen and find out what's been upgraded and downgraded. One of the big ones on the list here, top of the list for upgrades, Disney getting upgrade from Barclays and the price target increase here. This one also worth noting ahead of its shareholder vote on April 3rd and the ongoing issues and debates with Bob Iger and an activist investor Nelson Pelt. So interesting upgrade here from Barclays. Full up about two and a half percent after getting an upgrade from Evercore ISI. Supermicro getting an upgrade from JP Morgan Chase, but trading slightly down in the day. And Avis getting upgraded here by North Coast. Downgrades, Argus getting downgraded here, or Argus downgrading McDonald's here, but also really worth noting are these three EV related downgrades from Mizuho Neo, Tesla, and Rivian. Tesla and Rivian, especially interesting here. Rivian price target getting cut in half, 24 to 12. Tesla's getting lowered from 270 to 195, and both companies getting cut from buy to neutral ratings. So, really interesting look here, Mizuho and these EV downgrades, guys. All right, thank you, Ms. Adara. Um, yeah, so for me, I'm really excited about Disney. I mean, this upgrade finally. We last took some out at 112, thinking that we failed at that 115, but that was just a small piece. Now we're getting closer and closer to that 120 level that we like, so it is on here. We have a couple different names today. I left off Apple, Google, and some of the big tech names because of the EU, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Intel, Boeing, Disney. But I just wrote down here, so I actually... It's in our watch list that it got upgraded, so thanks for that from Adara, so that slipped my mind. But that's, I just would have wrote it down. I like this 117 break. I mean, we've, we've broken above there, so we need to get going a little bit, which is why I wrote down 117. And then right here, 116.50 was a nice little level for Disney as well, up 1% into a negative market. This is going to be the name that I'm going to try to trade, upgrade, trying to break out through the levels. We do have a high level here of 120, hopefully... I should have loaded this chart up a little bit. This takes a second. There it is right here. So, you know, if we can get anywhere back to these levels, I, I feel like that's a success. And then it's a win for everybody, board members, whoever. You know, you're buying shares down here on this kind of a name and you can get this bump. We'll take it. We know how hot travel is. CCL is going to come with a hot print. RCL has been flying. Some of these airlines have huge uh, over, over demand, over booking. Uh, did you drive or did you fly? You flew. Yeah. Yeah. So what was that like? Fun, uh, yeah. The flight flights were they, they offered me like vouchers to kind of uh, oh they tried to get you off the flight? yeah yeah. So there you go. <laughs> I was like That's the demand's exactly pretty high. I was about. like all right, well. And so they, 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 they also said it's March break or what? Uh, no, I think uh, you refused it. 
Yeah, yeah, I was okay, like, so not no, an I'm, offer you uh, can't refuse. Okay, so, uh, but but uh, again, you know, good, goes to good demand, and I just think that if Disney can finally get their ish sorted out in the theaters, and that was one of my one good things with Brendan this week was going back to the theater. I went with my kid. We went and saw a movie. It was a fantastic time. Nice. What'd you see? Oh, it was Demon Slayer. It's Ooh, an anime. It's yeah. one of the ones that's in the nice. theater. Yeah, so nice. he reads like those uh, manga books. Okay, um, cool. From, yeah, so we went there, and he has the whole collection of them, although he says he's too, maybe too old for it, but I was like, I don't think you're too old. Anyway, he's 12. Um, so we went to that, and that was a lot of fun. So anyways, back to the point about Disney. I don't know. I don't know. They got that Taylor Swift thing going on. We haven't watched it yet. Uh, that's, you've probably watched it four or five times. It's on the, um, the streaming now, and then hopefully Star Wars can get going and some of the Marvel. I don't know. But my big, bigger play is in travel and technically, I like to break above 117 here on Disney. So anything on there you like? Yeah, I, I like that downgrade on, uh, on McDonald's. A little interesting there. I have been watching it for uh, a couple of weeks since earnings. Uh, a little interesting action there. Uh, and also kind of, uh, yeah, downgrade. And then after earnings, we did sell off and take a look at that strong selling. Can't really get back uh, towards those highs, those initial uh, earnings reaction highs. And then another strong sell. Now we're getting a downgrade as well. So I'm just looking, uh, looking a little left on the chart there. And uh, take a look at this on the daily. Uh, daily looking pretty decent, but uh, yeah, this range seems interesting here. If we are to if we are to kind of cover this range once again with a little bit of a downgrade, this is what we're trading at right now. I think that if we break below this most recent low at that 278, this could prove to be an interesting interesting opportunity. You can see that there's a little bit of uh, of some strength as well, some lows there uh, that uh, that confluence with that 278 level you can see that selling kind of comes in as well in the past you can see that it also kind of bounces off of this level and also it, it's it's a, it's a, it's an area it's been used as a resistance and as support so i think it'll be interesting to see what mcdonald's will do in and around that 278 VinFast ignites a new era of electric mobility at the Bangkok International Motor Show this week, 2024, with their full spectrum of electric vehicles making their Southeast Asia debut. VinFast is steering Thailand into a sustainable future. Experience their range from the versatile VF3 to the luxurious VF9, all designed with Thai drivers in mind. Uh, be part of their official launch in Thailand's vibrant market and witness the future of smart green transportation March 27th all the way through to April 7th. Go to VinFast.com. VinFast driving the future today. Let's get a check of the overall market here at 9 o'clock to kick things off. Sharif's going to have a look at the futures. 52.93, Brando. That's where we closed out on Friday. The overnight high, 95, 52.95. So we closed be below 5,300. We're printing 78s right now. So let's go ahead and say that 100 point level is going to be that key area of resistance we have to keep our eye on. So 5,300 to the upside to support. That takes us all the way back to March 8th and March 14th where we topped out at 52.50. A lot to understand this morning if you haven't done so yet make sure you grab that absolutely free every single day from us to you just go to trader tv.live enter your email address and then you get that delivered right to your inbox you can scan that qr code too that will also get you there so uh this is the major story so china coming out um it was actually yesterday uh but uh, over the weekend essentially announcing that government computers will no longer be able to um, house AMD Intel, US-based semiconductors, so there's that. And then this is more for NVIDIA today, Google, Intel, Qualcomm, a couple other uh, smaller companies teaming up to um, go after that CUDA software platform that NVIDIA has everyone tied into their GPUs with. So not necessarily uh, the physical GPUs themselves, but the software side of things, so across the board. Semi's under a bit of pressure here. Yeah, Brendo, definitely. A China looking to focus on their own production. And since 2019, when the embargoes started to precipitate on chips, starting with the Trump administration, China's uh, um, top 10 equipment makers have increased revenue by about 39%. So we're talking about Huawei, we're talking about SMIC, which is their biggest uh, CPU manufacturer. But this doesn't just impact chips, guys. There were actually guidelines by the Chinese Communist Party with respect to Windows and other database software that they don't want being used on government computers. So we'll have to see how far reaching this is. So NVIDIA had a pretty impressive day on Friday, essentially ending the week at the highs. Were uh, there or thereabouts right now in that uh, top end of the range anyways. 
Yep. Uh, all right. So thanks, guys. I mean, yeah, unfortunately today there, there's... It looks like there is only going to be one king around here, and it's going to be NVIDIA for a minute because um, now the Chinese are coming out and throwing out some of these embargoes and bans and, and limits on, you know, what sort of the government's going to be trying to. We saw this with Apple. You mentioned that with Huawei, mm -hmm. and that sort of started sort of a downward push with Apple stock here. And then Intel's, I thought they got their stuff together. looked like it was bouncing off this 42. We came in, and I remember getting... Oh, yeah, that, that, that was the day where we were really going long 42, hoping that that, what was it, 30 billion, could have been up to 30 billion, but 8 billion that uh, the government had given them to finally get their um, foundries rocking and rolling and keep all that chips. Well, you know what, the thing is, long term, I actually think it's a good idea. And I mean, this is a good example of why. If the Chinese come out and start banning technology, then you do want to start to build these things in-house, right? And so I, that's fine. I mean, AMD and NVIDIA already U.S. companies. But here comes Intel coming back into the 200 period. I think we test that and I think we go lower. I mean, there, what, what is a good catalyst right now? The, everyone's talking about the market being heated and then some of these chip names. So are you going to go in and buy Intel on any dips? Or are you going to buy NVIDIA? Are you going to buy AMD on dips? I feel like you're going to buy those names and you're going to leave names like Intel. I mean, even Micron that came out with a huge uh, beat the other day. You're going to buy Micron, who's guided forward and actually showed you results, you know, with a positive guide. This would be a name that if the chip names came in, that, peop that traders would buy. They're not, I don't think they're going to be buying Intel. So for me, it is the number one idea once again. And you know what? This has been the kiss of death for Intel. So everybody go long. Like, I loved Intel long last week on that money. This week, I think it's one of the best names to go short. Obi and I have talked about this. We just talked about it quickly right now as well, just to make sure we're on the same page. I think this short right here is pretty, pretty tasty, man. I mean, we've already broken below this 42 level. I mean, if you go short, if this gets anywhere back up into 41.50, which is what I wrote down, which is that bottom, if it gets anywhere near there and I'm not short, then... I've probably hit my head because that, that, that is a level that I'm going, I'm already offering. So, you know, something has to happen there. I like that short and, and honestly, Obi, I think we could go short immediately right off the open, but let's just, let's just wait to let it sit, settle down because often I do that and then I'm down whatever, a couple hundred bucks or whatever it is and my mood changes and I'm like, I'm short and it's not even a level that I like yet. So we'll wait, we'll wait for Intel, but I, I'll probably short that, especially if it gaps back to VWAP, we'll probably short that, whatever that level is at that time. So AMD is a little bit of a different story. Sure, they're banned as well, but we actually like AMD because AMD's come back in into this 170 area here, and I think it's going to find support. Now, maybe, maybe for a day trade today, the long isn't right. But again, if you're going to have an, a, a, like a mini NVIDIA or... NVIDIA 2, I know AMD is more expensive than NVIDIA because they don't have the forward-looking sales numbers that NVIDIA has, so that's going to change what that PE looks like. But if everything is all well in GPU land, some of these major, major LLMs and all this uh, generative AI, they're going to need chips regardless. They don't necessarily, maybe they don't need Blackwell or they don't need the absolute best. There's going to be others that are going to be hanging around with some inventory um, at much cheaper prices. So I, I don't hate on AMD. Potentially a level to look at would be 170. Only because it's, it's a nice key level. I, I think you want to sit there. We, we saw action on this name around 180 for a minute as well. So, um, you know, I feel like there could be, like look at 180. It was a pretty good magnet there on Friday. We didn't get too low until finally we broke here this morning. So, yeah. I, I prefer the AMD long if the market holds up and definitely an Intel short. And I didn't even look at NVIDIA yet. Yeah, no, I, li I, like, uh, I like those names. For a second, I thought, I thought the chat was dead because uh, nothing, nothing was coming up. I'm like, where is everybody? I had to restart the chat. You're so in the I wrong one I, or what? No, I think it, it, I just had to restart it. I, th I think it was like bugged. It kind of got uh, a little, uh, little 
it wasn't updating. So, so you're with me on Intel, or what do you think? Yeah, definitely, um, definitely with you on Intel. I'm looking for that continuation move uh, in 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 play with with that kind of news. I like that 4150. Literally, I, I pulled up the chart and I looked at that, and I was like, yeah, that's kind of a distinct kind of level. You can see that we had some Arval as well in the pre-market session. That uh, then when during the day we made that bottom, and now we're trading kind of below that off of this news. So it'll be interesting to see if we can even get back up there. But uh, yeah, trading below that earnings reaction as well. Let's take a look at a little bit higher time frame on this one as well. Um, you can see that it's got it's got a little bit of room here, a little bit of air uh, to the downside at least until 40, and then uh, a little bit maybe maybe a little further down into this uh, 39, 38 as well. But I don't know. Let's see what let's see what it does. Let's see what the price action has in store for us today. I'll be waiting. I'll be a little patient off the open. If I see what I like, um, I'll definitely get involved. But uh, yeah. I'll take what the market will give me. AMD as well, um, watching that. Been fading off already for uh, the past few days. We saw that little bit of an exhaustive move happen, that push into that 225 and that, uh, that aggressive kind of uh, sell-off. This was around the 24th. I think this was the day that SMCI had that crazy move, right? Was that the 24th? Yes, it was. And Intel, um, sorry, AMD kind of selling off since then as well. Actually, no, sorry. That was, uh, that was this one here, not this one. I apologize. March 24th. Um, sorry, March 8th is what I'm talking about. March 8th, 2024. So we've been sell selling off since then. And uh, coming into uh, some of these lows from before, the earnings reaction low as well. So it'll be interesting to see. We're still at 170s. I got, what do I have down? I got 170, I got 172 and some change right here. We're just, uh, we're just testing that level right now. So let's see what, what these chip names do. Chips with the dip today on some of these names. Is like, would it be man. like, okay, so I asked this to Brendan before. Guacamole, salsa, or queso for your dip with those chips? I think you've asked me this question. I, I, what I was it? I, I, I like Super the, Bowl talk. About yeah, I, I, like, I like the guac. The I like guac, the salsa okay. as well. Okay. A bit of mix. I can never remember who I'm talking about this with. I'm getting old. So, so you like the guac with the salsa mix. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I agree. You boys up there, I think Brendan's a guac guy. You I'm going to say Sharif's like a little spicy in there. I'm, I'm going to say Sharif might be a salsa guy. Let's go find out. 100% accurate, Sean. I actually had a, uh, a salsa on the weekend that was really good. And it was not a, uh, not a homemade brand. Ooh. I don't even remember what the name of it was, but it was really good. Anyway, uh, let's talk about Tesla here. Uh, yeah, downgrade this morning, as we mentioned, Rivian and Tesla catching some negativity from uh, analysts. This was going back to last week. Uh, so Kathy Wood was in there buying both Thursday and Friday. Uh, for Tesla. So, I mean, still one of the uh, worst stocks of the year. It's hard to even say that. But um, a little more detail on this uh, Shanghai wind down that we were touching on um, at the end of last week as well. Apparently, it was supply chain. Uh, they blamed, anyways, a okay. uh, lack of supply chain for this uh, slowdown. Again, if you missed it, they um, cut some production in Shanghai for a couple of weeks. It's not the first time we've heard of that. Um, I think the European one was having the Berlin Gigafactory was having issues with supply because the, uh, the parts couldn't come in through the Suez Canal. So not surprised there. But yeah, Mizuho Endless, VJ Rakesh going down hard on the electric vehicle industry today. He downgraded Rivian, Tesla, and Neo, basically citing uh, issues with the, the electric vehicle market. That's uh, a little bit different than what we saw from Oppenheimer, which maintained Tesla with a perform rating and maintaining the price target there. Also, Brendo, the Xiaomi uh, SUV, the SU7, supposed to be starting at about 70,000 US dollars, about 500,000 yuan. So we'll have to see if that affects Chinese sales for the Model yeah. Y. We were just talking to Randy about some of these and the options that are now kind of floating in um, as time goes by here. But if you remember on Friday, this thing was down huge pre-market and just went straight up all day. So kind of setting up the same here, guys. All right. so. Yeah, that Xiaomi, I mean, I was talking with Randy actually in the back there with a coffee, and the thing about it was, you know, I, I told him, what do you think about Lucid, you know, and, and not what do you think about it, but we talked about that billion dollars, and then we talked about uh, where Rivian was, and, and some of that, you know, rhetoric there about the R2 not coming until next year, and are people going to be pulling their reservations and buying something else in the meantime. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff happening right now in a lot of these different names. And, and Tesla, just again, I wrote it down. It's on the sticky note today. 
And I wrote it as a fade into 172. No, I don't think, I mean, if we can get up to there, that was the high in the afternoon there. So we'll fade if we can get up there. I wasn't sure about what this day is going to bring because I'm still a little bit on, you know, off ease about what that whole Apple, Google meta stuff is because I feel like the market should be down more than it is right now off that. So for Tesla, again, Xiaomi coming out with a new car. That's going to be a problem. All we need is one report today uh, on Intel down 4%, AMD down 4%, on Chinese um, not allowing only their government to not use those chips. I just fear, and I don't think they're there for Tesla yet, the, the amount of employment and everything in that Shanghai plant and what Tesla does mean to China's economy as well, just like Apple, right? I feel like there's a lot of threats that get put into place. Um, but I, I am legitimately worried a little bit about China, that economy over there, Obi, and what that means for sales of Teslas. Because if those numbers are lower, we've seen Lee Auto producing cars, we've seen Xpeng coming with a $14,000 car, they're talking about that. So if Xpeng can get that, okay. um, NEO uh, has a different model with the battery switching. I just think there's a lot of competition over there in, in China and not much the U.S. can do about it. So we can, we can stamp tariffs on all this to not be able to bring the cars or make them less affordable or whatever into the United States and into Canada. But we can't do anything about what happens over there in China. So for me, unfortunately, I think until we get some little bit happier times over there, I think Tesla's a short and I'm waiting for up into the 170s to do that. And, you know, the buy is down here. If we can get, I wrote down, if we can get down into 162, that'd be fantastic. But I don't think we get there. Maybe you take a shot at 166 if you like the long. But again, I feel like this is a Monday. We sit on our hands a little bit here with Tesla. To me, the trade would be looking over here at, at a Lucid and just seeing if that can hold this $3 mark. That's where you could get a bounce back up. People, you know, we talked about the short covering, then you can let it go um, once the shorts are covered. So we'll wait to see if that can happen here on Lucid too. So I don't know. I'm not, I'm not in love with anything Tesla related today. Yeah, uh, I think I definitely agree with you there. Um, bit of a bit of a in, in the middle of a middle of a range or uh, middle of this chop oh, right here Intel. as of right now. But uh, yeah, looking looking a little left that 160 kind of standing out. Oh, maybe Intel. this low right here, a bit of a gap. You had this consolidation post uh, post one of the splits, I guess, um, in and around this area as well. But yeah, interestingly, we have been kind of selling off of this uh, larger um, downtrend. If you look at this since uh, 2022. And uh, yeah, a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a sell-off, but uh, today nothing really on my radar for uh, for that one. There it is, a, or it was, I guess, doing some Marvel on Friday. I wasn't here on Friday, but maybe some continuation off of uh, off of previous days, high and low here, um, some strong action, and then reversion off the open. It would seem so. 171 uh, being the being the end of day consolidation high, as well as the day highs, and then day lows in and around that 166. To 165 oh. half might be interesting, but again, not. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm probably not going to have eyes Fabian. on this ticker today. But for those of you who may be looking for that trade, um, good luck to y'all. Uh, just real quickly, so Fabian and Ramin position board not working. I am short right now. Intel. So we're short Intel. Intel just came into 41 dollars. We went short there. We'll see. We're not going to do anything crazy. A couple hundred shares right now, but we are short right here. Intel into what could be a good open for this name. Market trying to bounce back a little bit here. We're short Intel just right now at $40.95. We'll get that on the board in a minute. All right, let's talk about tech here. On the back of what happened last week with uh, Apple and the DOJ, uh, the EU coming through this morning announcing, uh, I mean, basically the same thing, uh, fresh antitrust probe on not only Apple, but uh, metal and uh, metal. Meta and Google uh, included in this. And it's the same thing, it, it, exactly the same thing that DOJ was talking about last week, that um, Apple has monopoly with their products and they don't allow versatility for, you know, if somebody wanted to use an Apple Watch with an Android phone or, exactly. or Air, AirPods with, uh, with something else. So uh, here we go again, this time on the uh, EU side of things. Yeah, so look, they have this new act, it's called the Digital Markets Act. It's the first time they're gonna actually use the uh, investigatory powers under it to investigate some of these big tech, big tech companies. So let's talk about, about what they're being investigated for. So Apple, three main things. They're preventing iOS users from knowing about cheaper alternatives. We saw that with Spotify a few weeks ago. So that's not new to us. They're also making it a little bit harder to uninstall some 
uh, already installed apps as well as um, actively prompting users to change some of their apps that they're using into the default Apple ones. So that is the issue with Apple with Google. It looks as if Google may be prioritizing its own services in search results ahead of others. That's much to the chagrin of the European Union and Meta. Um, they're looking to you know offer a subscription model without ads, and that is uh, not. They're, they're not I'm happy just, about that. I'm laughing. I'm trying not insane. to laugh either, Brendo. Like, but you know, Google's prioritizing their own. Obviously, I don't know what to say. It's crazy. <laughs> Look, it's the same thing that happened to Apple on, like, Apple basically got punished for making the best phone in the world. Now Google's getting punished for using their own data. It is, it is what it is. No, but that's literally what they said in their thing. It's like, your product was so good that you're forcing people never to leave. It's like, there, there was like the email that they were quoting was like, you said that if you're, you make the ecosystem so good, then, you know, people who buy an Apple Watch may have to buy a phone. You know, it's just like, it's so stupid. Isn't that the whole point of it, you know? Um, anyways, let's move on. Uh, right now, Fisker, apparently, I guess Nissan or whoever it was, uh, has officially terminated whatever potential deal. So that couple hundred bucks that we threw at Fisker at... 14 cents, whatever it was on Thursday there. Uh, looks like that's going to get dwindled away, and maybe we'll get out ASAP uh, for the hit now as Fisker started to do volume right now, big time, as um, the, the large automaker that was rumored to have a deal or be kicking the tires on something with Fisker has definitely kicked the tires on Fisker. Um, okay, so for, for, for me, I... This is why I, I mean, it's exactly why Brendan sort of, we, you know, we're ho-humming this story because we don't really know, I don't know anyways, what this is going to do to the stock. I mean, it doesn't appear to be doing anything. Like, I thought that when I woke up and saw this headline or whatever, when I looked on my phone and I said, oh, this is, I was like, okay, good. The Nasdaq's going to be down one, two, three percent today. Um, but no, it's, it, it's holding for it here. And these are just reasons, again, for the European Union to come out and employ people that, um, you know, that they, that they employ, to, to pay the people that they employ, um, give them a job to do. And uh, yeah, let's just keep on investigating. Look, you got to have watch, you got to have watchdogs, you got to have eyes on these big corporations. I like Google. I think they've really performed well. Um, that was a great bottom. That's also the uh, 200 period moving average. We got back down into this 130. What a good buy that was. You know, we wound up buying Apple at 169. That seemed to have been a mistake. They have a deal with, well, potential deal, rumor deal with Gemini and Apple kicking the tires there as well. We'll see if they can get something going. I, I like Google. If they can't get Gemini in there, which they will obviously have big announcements about how that's going to affect the Pixel environment, how that's going to affect Google Home and all everything that's attached. But if they can also get something with the iOS, then I really think this is great. And I like Google here. Obviously, I talk about what, what kind of a percentage of my portfolio it is, the large one, and I would love nothing more than to take out this one, whoops, this 155 right there. So I think Google's on a, on a course with 155. And if today slows it down a little bit, so be it. We'll be buying dips. I just got to figure out where those dips are. And then, you know, Apple is an Apple. It, it, it's been in trouble for a minute, man. I mean, we... We, we bought these dips down here, and we were talking about getting out at 180. It didn't quite get there, Obi. It got to 178, and then we got hit again last week on more stories. Now we'll wait to see if they can get out of the way. It seems like there was worry about AI. They kind of got that a little solved. And then there was now there's worries about trust and competition. They can't seem to get that figured out either. So here comes Apple right into 170. I'd say buy that 170. We've been looking at holding it. If we can't hold it, though, then I'd get the heck out of the way because the next bottom's 168. So watch out for that. So far, so good here. We don't have the board up, but maybe when I get out, we will. So we are short right now. Let's put a bid. I'm actually bidding 85s. So if we can get 85 print, we'll take 10 cents early here on Intel, and we'll see what happens after that. But short Intel early. Yeah, I like, uh, I like that Apple move. We had that uh, last we week. Go. Um, and Google as well. What I, what, I re what I just noticed as you were talking about both, uh, both Google and uh, Apple there, Apple sold off on this day when they got that news, but 
Google, interestingly, strong, uh, strong action as well, um, literally the, 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 the next day there. So um, some interesting stuff. Apple can't really do that. Uh, it doesn't really recover as much, but looking left, it seems like that 170 is a little interesting. Uh, if we can kind of get below, we got a little bit more, uh, more support in and around that 167 as well. So yeah, maybe potential for a continuation. I am more of an Android guy myself, yep. I'll be honest, but uh, I, think, I think the, 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 um, the allegations um, have, have some potential merit. Like they're, they're, sh they're shutting out systems to competitors. Yes, their environment is very, very nice, but it's also very restricting and, and controlled. I think I was reading something about how um, when uh, an iPhone user sends a video or a picture to an Android user, it's purposefully um, uh, downgraded in quality. Whereas if an Apple user sends it to an Apple user, Wrong message. Th yeah, through and then there's no, there, like uh, there's uh, incentive. I think it's only WhatsApp, right? A lot of my friends that do have iPhones, I talk to them sense. through WhatsApp or texting, right? There's no, there's not really other uh, maybe maybe Facebook messaging, but that's really rare. But um, yeah, mainly just mainly just WhatsApp. So uh, I think uh, I think it's it's kind of reasonable to be like, all right, well, why? Why do you do that? It's a little unnecessary they if you're doing that on purpose. But I have see, no idea. I have no right, knowledge of yeah. these things. Because they're not actually doing what you're saying. They're just, iMessage is just another level. It's a different program. Mm -hmm. It's like the reason why WhatsApp works is because you're using WhatsApp on your Android, mm -hmm. and your friends are also using WhatsApp. Right, it's just through so the app. If you send it through Google Messenger, right. if they had such program, like if you send me a Gchat message, mm -hmm. it probably won't degrade as much from Android to Apple. Really? Because they're both using Gchat. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is Apple doesn't let you download the iMessage program. Right. So that's, it's, I mean, there, there, there's okay. merit to, all, to everything. It's just a matter of trying to get it all figured out. Can't we all just work together? Yeah. You know, I mean, can we all just be friends uh, at some point? Uh, all right, market's starting to move around. Let's go. We're, we're really back here. So uh, let's go talk about crypto quickly and then we'll move on. Uh, uh, crypto higher this morning. Just real quick on this Fisker uh, note, guys. There was, I was just reading through some of the other comments that were coming through and it sounded like wh whoever it was, the quote unquote major automotive maker, they were actually pretty close on a deal. And it said it came down to financing, and they just weren't able to produce the financing in time. So uh, Fisker's going to zero. Uh, <laughs> crypto is higher, as we said. Uh, Boeing at the bottom there, if you missed it, there was a bunch of changes announced this morning. CEO's gone at the end of the year. Chairman's gone at the end of the year as well. Yeah, micro strategies up big. Brendo, 5%, almost 5% right now as Bitcoin starts uh, working its way back into that $70,000 range. So we'll keep eyes on that. With respect to Boeing, tough look here. We already know that uh, CEO Dave Calhoun is going to be resigning, but that's not the only uh, type of uh, bad headline for them in the news today. United Airlines also under investigation by the FAA, FAA specifically with a 737 MAX incident and a 777 incident, Brenda. So a little bit of a pop there. Um, not seeing anything new, but Boeing did move up and then right back down on that, it would appear, guys. All right, so yeah, for me, we'll just go, I mean, I think Boeing here, we, this is on my watch list down here at 192. So I feel like, I know we're on OB screen, but I, I, I like this little bit of a dip in for Boeing. So if we can get anything down into 192 and change, we will try to play off that level. So um, yeah, Ryanair sees continuing to work with Boeing. Okay, so, um, you know, some, some, some decent notes coming through. Look, as far as crypto is concerned, I mean, 66 and change, we can quickly, quickly go over this because I just look at iBit and we don't actually trade crypto itself. So if I notice that crypto is actually moving around, then we'll go over here, over into a um, iBit trade. But for right now, I'm always looking to see, so because my eyes are going to be on crypto, which will be in the bottom right, what levels do we really need to be concerned with? So it just looks like if I look down and I see like that 66.7, that's right now. Basically a breakdown here, somewhere in and around 65, 66. I mean, that's a great little level to look at as well. So anything in and around 66,000 gets me looking um, at IBIT. So a little bit of a move down and we'll find some support there with only two minutes to go. So um, that'll be the name that I trade, IBIT. I've been looking at it, I like it. It's been fun to trade, lots of volume, easy to get in and out of this name. So IBIT for me is a trade and we've looked at it and it's around this 36 area is something that we like to trade. So if IBIT can get down there, we'll do that. Coinbase, always a fun trade as well, but haven't really had a chance to look at this today. So, you know, we'll, we'll be there, but I want to watch Google, Apple, Intel, 
Boeing, Disney, and the like. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, I think there's uh, there's some names that uh, kind of uh, maybe deserve a little now. bit more attention uh, based off of uh, based off of how in play they are. Bitcoin, yes, it is it is uh, it is in play, but in a sense. But uh, I think uh, with uh, AMD and Intel news, um, with the Apple and Google news, I think we have uh, some some better places to look for opportunities. And I was reading uh, what CompSRX was saying. Yeah, unspoken things for sure, man. Um, there's uh, things. Things are always a little bit uh, more than more than uh, meets the eye. I would definitely agree. And yeah, at the end of the day, the trade is the trade. Things go up, things go down. We try to take those opportunities. At least that's what I'm trying to do better. And uh, I definitely agree with you there on that one, my friend. Okay, here we go, man. We only have a couple seconds left, and get ready to rock and roll. We're already in this Intel short, so let's see if that can print out uh, coming down right now. So we'll hit the countdown. Uh, Apple's trying to get to 170 already. We'll have a look at that, Obi. Uh, as we get going with only four seconds to go, three, two, and one. We are bidding Disney. We're looking at some Boeing opportunities as well. As there goes Intel. Intel just touched 83, so we'll put a bid down there, see if we can get some Intel out uh, right now. So did we? No, we did not. Uh, we're waiting to get that out on Intel down here in the low 80s. Just yeah, quickly, I mean, though. I mean, if we have anything else, we'll find that. And here comes Apple. Apple's right now taking 170 as we speak. Yeah, some uh, some strength there. Do we want to short that, man. What do you What do you look at? Apple. What do you Apple? Do? No, I'm just I'm I'm gonna be patient for the first few minutes. Let's see what we do. Almost. I do have Intel and Nike on my main screen here. Um, and uh, here, let me just change this tape up for you guys. Intel. All right. So yeah, 41. We're looking for that uh, potentially that 41 half. Let's see how far we can get. Nike is pushing up. Uh, into uh, in towards that 95 level. Let's continue to continue to watch that one. I am also watching um, FedEx FedEx earnings day two as well. Um, let's see comes, what that here comes Intel does as well. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay wow, patient Disney. for the first few minutes. Let's see what we got going on. Uh, 41.20 is coming in on Intel, so it is catching a little bit of a bid right off the open. Let's see what some of these other um, uh, chip names are doing. Nvidia to the downside, catching a little bit of a sell. Uh, Intel is the only one. SMCI catching a pop. Uh, AMD also selling off as well uh, into that uh, se uh, 172 half. So let's let's be a little bit more patient. Let's, Man, see. let's wait for something on the tape to show up. Man, did we nail that Disney, by the way. But unfortunately, um, we it was so good that there was no dip by opportunities at all uh, for Disney. It's not that, you know, we're not long, the name. So we didn't nail it like that. Uh, but we, we talked about it. We liked it. Disney right now trying to do, make some moves up to 118, 119. Man, we're getting pretty close now uh, to the levels that we like here on Disney. So watch out uh, for that name. All right. The other one here obviously moving around for us is Intel. That's going to the upside. So let's be careful. I am looking to go short Apple. Apple looks to break 1770 here. It's big size. We'll see. I put uh, down to only punch uh, as low as 90s. So we'll see about that take right now if that can go. We have VWAP up, up here at 17060. If we take that, then we can get out. Wow, Disney is really, man, dude, Disney is motoring uh, right now. Okay, here goes Intel, baby. It's it's the move that we all wanted to uh, watch for, and bang, there it is, man. There, the money's coming in now. We reloaded that at 41. Let's take it out in the 70s there, Obi. Good trade downside for Intel. We believed in that one, and we nailed it. Good trade there uh, for only for one trade that we have so far. That's Intel, Apple rate there disney as well my friend uh that's up to 119 oh man uh oh man oh man uh we got to get out some of that one as we wait for intel and disney to make some moves but that disney i want to be at 120 man uh that's going to be a good trade but we don't get out of anything while we're on the show other than what we show you so right now disney nice move up to 119 that's going to be a good trade um anything else moving around that you see um nothing too crazy i do like that nike uh i did get a little involved in that nike just putting in uh, my uh, stop there. Let's see how well this kind of works. Um, 90, uh, 95 pushing right as of right now. It is a bit of a bit of a level from uh, last week. Um, just gonna just gonna dabble into this for now. Let's see how it kind of does uh, with that little bit of a feeler. Yeah, Intel coming in coming back into that 41. I'm gonna stay a little bit more patient on on the Intel here um, uh, just to see let it build some price action there. Uh, and then get involved a little bit later. I might have been a little too early on Nike, but that's perfectly fine. I just want to see uh, how that kind of works out for now. Okay, so yeah, got, get punched out right away underneath that 95. I'll come back to it again. Um, but yeah, I think I think I got to do a little bit better for for fighting for price. 
if I like that 95, I think I should be posted a little bit closer to that 95 instead of punching into some strength going through that 95. But it is what it is. We reassess. We'll come back. Uh, let's see what Nike does in and around that 95. Intel still holding that 41 as of right now. Something that did kind of blast off the open here I'm watching is Arm. Arm is moving oh, yeah, uh, decently as well. Uh, nice, some, some nice strength right off the open. AMD pushing that 175. Okay, so maybe Intel has some room to go. Let's uh, again. I think the the, the the bellwether for a lot of these chips is going to be Nvidia, uh, and a lot of eyes definitely on Nvidia. But uh, let's see. Some of them could definitely disconnect. But I'm going to stay a little patient here. Uh, Nike getting back above that 95. So let's see if we can get some consolidation, some continuation. Let's see what we got here on Nike above that 95. Okay, we have a couple of things, Obi. We have a couple of good trade, well, a couple of ideas on anyways. So we're just going to start Boeing. Boeing did fall in right into our levels, man. We talked about 192. So I'm actually bidding here at 192.21. So there it is. So now I was just going to give this to, to 80. So there, the, the 50 period moving average is at 80. So if we break too much below that, then we will just be wrong on Boeing, obviously, um, and take an L on that one. But it's, it's a level that we don't mind. Oh, shoot. Here we go. So it looks like it's going to break through. I mean, I think we're at 75s or so on that one. So there goes Boeing. We'll have to, I mean, it's not out yet, but we're going to have to watch out for it coming out of the blotter right now. Intel does make another move. I'm still going to bid some more in the 80s. Watch out for Boeing. It just bounced off that level. We're still trying to get on that Apple front here um, and looking to go short on Apple. So if that comes in, that will be fine. Uh, Boeing trying to bounce. So this is an interesting name. So maybe it will bounce off that. It got right into that level for us, um, and then we did not get stopped out. So maybe we should uh, take that into consideration and maybe get something out if it does pop in one more time. There it goes. So we just got out. It just broke that 80 level. So we'll slap a fail on it. We could have taken a little bit of profit out there, uh, but we didn't, and we messed that one up uh, right there for Boeing. So out on that, we took a shot. I'm fine with taking that, um, but it definitely does not work out there. Apple to the downside, or sorry, Apple. Uh, Boeing to the downside right there and continuing going. Uh, Lucid, we took a shot, so here we go. These are the levels that we wanted for Lucid. We talked about it coming down into three bucks. So yeah, up to 16, 17. Let's just keep taking it out. There it is. So you go a little bit of a fail on one and you get right back on that horse, Obi, and take it right back, bang, right there. So out on Boeing, um, nice trade now, 10 cents. We'll see if Lucid could get more and then uh, Intel still trying to go as well. Um, SMCI calls very, very active as SMCI looking to take out a thousand right now. What is AMD doing? 175. AMD's going up. Intel's going down. It looks like we might have chose the right one this time uh, with that. And then we talked about Micron the other day as I was seeing people in the chat talk about that. Boom. Remember, we were like, why would you do that when you could go the other way uh, with anything else? So there goes Apple to the downside as well. Man, Obi, I don't know if you're in anything, and I apologize for not knowing because uh, I am in a slew of uh, right now as come on Apple bang that's a good one right there let's get to the downside on Apple as we said we're shorting that break of 170 and that's exactly what we did um, so far so good here today but man I'm a busy guy uh, on this side this guy's got Nike back up to 170 right now is Apple so let's be careful with all of these trades but so far so good here guys yeah, I'm still uh, still watching that uh, Intel. Intel chilling around that uh, around that 41 level as of right now. So uh, yeah, maybe a little bit more patience. I'll wait a few more minutes. What time is it? It has been only thir uh, uh, It's only been seven minutes off the open. So maybe that first uh, 15 minute. Uh, candle. Let's see what that kind of prints there. That 41 holding as of right now. But yeah, definitely Apple to the downside. Softy to the downside. Google L to the downside as well. Amazon catching a little bit of a bid. And take a look at our friend NVIDIA. NVIDIA is the one that's catching a bid as well now, kind of falling back up, uh, up the, uh, that strength. From Friday, so Friday again. I wasn't here, but oh boy, that oh boy. Uh, that bounce yeah. off of that 910, that 900 level, quite interesting. Holds view up all day. So let's see if some of that strength comes back in today uh, on uh, on Nvidia, and maybe does that drag Intel around as well? Who knows? But I am waiting to find out here with this 41 holding so well. Are we going right. to Adara? Okay, uh, I think it's probably about Fisker, but let's go to Adara. Yeah, no, uh, another s smaller name here on watch, CYTO. This one up about 85% trading higher after announcing a collaboration with this other group with regards to an mRNA vaccine. Worth noting here as well, they do have a really small float here, 1.56 million shares. CYTO, guys. Um, so I'll just, I'll drop that Fisker news. It is halted right now. So Fisker now halted. Um, and I just think it's probably news pending because 
where they're just going to announce, from what I can see here on Benzinga Pro, it's, a, it's what we've already talked about. Fisker shares are trading lower after the company announced received notice that the large automaker with the company has been negotiated with potential transaction terminated. So, um, you know, as it goes, we'll wait for that. Um, okay, so Apple, again, you know, a decent trade here for Apple. Let's just see if it wants to continue that move to the downside, right? We sort of talked about what our expectations were here. We broke through 170, so let's wait to see about that bottom because if this news is, I mean, they have the EU plus today, it's EU again, but it's a different wing, isn't it? It's the, uh, today we are looking at, yeah, antitrust regulators, uh, their investigation of the Digital Markets Act. So right there, we'll see, we'll continue to um, hold short this name and just wait to see how bad this news exactly is. And it doesn't seem to be good. So um, that's that. Um, all right. So right here, Intel, we'll have to watch out for them to see if they can do something. Uh, now Apple's starting to go down, still 17 cents, still looking to get some damage done on this name. Um, and that, of course, is... Apple downside. GameStop apparently pumping higher as well right now. We talked about some potential short flow names. Maybe we'll have to go back on those. Lucid still at 12 cents in the money. We just took another piece out down there. So we waited for $3. That's working out good. My eyes are just going everywhere. I'm still trying to watch that Apple. We just got more shares short on Intel. And then I'm trying to watch Boeing because it might have based out here as well uh, down at 191. But that news, we got it wrong the first time. Let's not get married to it again. Um, and there it comes right now. All right. So we'll bid some 87s here, then some 83s. Let's get lower here on Intel. We just bounce off 87. I think there it goes through 87. Let's get a little lower, 85s. We just reloaded at VWAP for Intel. Stay in the pocket with the names that you like. Yeah, I do like that Intel. I, I was watching that 41. It is coming in quite uh, quite nicely off of uh, off of said VWAP there as well. I did get stopped out We're once again on that Nike. So it seems like that 95 uh, maybe needs a little bit more time. It's definitely sellers uh, coming in just above that uh, above that 95 as of right now. But uh, I'll stay a little bit more patient. I'll leave that alone um, and, and uh, focus on a little bit of Intel as it attempts to get through that pre market low as, right now. Um, NQ. Uh, pushing Mine fresh lows tell, there. Baby. There goes 4077 on the bid. Some size at 76s as well. Let's see what we do with those guys uh, right there. So let me get a little bit uh, short through that pre-market low and see how uh, how well this kind of works out there. So a little bit further than I'd really like in terms of price, but we'll we'll uh, we'll work with what we got here. Let me just throw in my stop there, Sean. Okay, good. Uh, good trade there. Um, we're, we're really starting to bank out now, man. The number one trade idea here on the sticky note today is Intel. And man, oh man, uh, it's nice to see this one going down to days low right now for Intel after we just reloaded this one. So again, this is the kind of the stuff that I've really changed um, with what I'm trying to do is, is to try to focus as best as I can on these names, right? On the names, when I get filled on something and it's working for me, I want to stay with it and I want to try to get more shares, to be honest with you, because when we're right, we got to be right. And we don't want to be right on like, oh, we guessed and we just put on this little trade. Like, no, we want to be right where we can actually make some loot. So here we go to the downside. Let's just wait to see if Intel can continue to go. We want to get more short Apple here at 170. We're waiting for that trade. So that would be something for sure. Yeah, XOM's going up. I understand that. Lucid right now. I mean, we can look at Nat Gas uh, or sorry, or, or the energy space. 30s right now for Lucid. I mean, you guys want to talk about a money-making opportunity. How does Lucid sound right now? We talked about that in the pre-market. I mean, right there, that is an unlimited amount of shares that anybody could have had there on Lucid. And in fact, we'll just take it out at 325 and then potentially go long again if we take this 330. So that's a good trade there for Lucid. We'll empty out the clip there. Apple now, now getting to the day's low again. Let's go, man. We are spinning it today. It's been a good day so far. Um, nice trade there for Lucid. Intel's still trying to go. What else do we have on our board? Amazon, Affirm, I'm noticing right now. AFRM trying to go to the upside now as well. Um, yeah, there it is. Up to $37, up 3% going oppo today. So we, we're going to have to wait to see about a firm right now going the wrong way uh, against this market. But yeah, man, these shorts, Obi, man, that's, what's, that's really what's going. We said that we like to trade when we can find the way. And right now, the way is short. And we talked about that early, man. We like the short. It's on the sticky you note. Know, what's up, A? So keeping an eye on Fisker, I'll let you guys know if I see anything there, but also DWAC, DWAC making uh, some moves here, pretty volatile. It looks like this is still reacting to Friday's news that the shareholders of the company did approve the proposed merger with Trump's uh, Truth Social and the Trump Media and Technology Group. So interesting look here. Keep an eye on DWAC. Lots of volume, guys. 
nice shorts and everything like that. So it's nice to get that. Thank you, Obi. I appreciate all that. Uh, but then I was just like, I wish I was smarter to know that like this one, he's like, what, it, you know, looking at the tape, I was like, no, Apple was really Obi, just a pretty smooth 170 break. I'm mad we didn't get reloaded there. That's my bad. We'll take some more out. And then Intel, both yeah. you and I discussed this at 8.30, right. um, why we liked Intel. So, um, yeah, so, so far, so good. It's always nice when things work out, my friend. Oh. Um, and again, today it is doing that. As we do go 0 for 1 uh, with our Boeing trade, but then we go, I mean, a monster Good trade here for Lucid. Uh, great trade for Intel. Great trade for Apple. So, um, yeah, we're definitely where we need to be here today. Yeah, for sure. I'm watching uh, Softy as well. Softy, uh, strong selling to the downside as well as Google. That 150 happens to break right off the open on Google. So let's take a quick look at that one right now. I'll show you guys right here. Kind of retracing some of, that, some of the action that we had on uh, on Friday, there is some strength in the, from the pre-market as well. Uh, we broke Friday's uh, day low as well, or intraday low, not really the, the day low, pre-market low it being in and around, what is that, 45.72 as of right now. And uh, yeah, some, some, some weakness there, some selling off happening. You can see the NQ kind of uh, pushing fresh lows, Same, uh, similar with the ES potentially catching up there. Hasn't made a fresh low just yet, but attempting to take a look at that nasty little wick on that first 15 minute candle that uh, that's kind of a continuation of what we've been doing going into the morning session there. Um, and yeah, look, take a look at that Nike, um, Nike getting that, uh, getting that sell off of that 95 and some change. So yeah, I was definitely wrong on that idea, uh, pushing in a little bit too aggressively as well, getting in above that 95. If I like that 95 price, maybe deal with that and transact with that a little bit closer there, uh, punching in, a, maybe not in anticipation, but a little bit emotional, uh, impulsive punches all the way at 95.30s, but that's perfectly fine. Uh, in, uh, in terms of risk management, we, uh, we kind of uh, stopped out underneath that 95, that's where we're wrong, and uh, I am glad I kind of follow that. For now, let's see what this Intel has in store. Let's see if that continuation move comes in, but I'm getting a bit of a bounce here on the NQ with uh, about to, with a fresh 15 minute candle, it is 9:46, right. and uh, the, the second 15 minute candle has just begun. And Intel looking kind of juicy. Yeah. Okay. I was thinking um, the same thing. I was just going to say to you, um, we can't have you know winning trades unless you actually take them out. So um, Apple and Intel, like so, we just went to the upside a little bit more here on actually on both of these names. So uh, we're going to have to wait. You know, again, if we're going to get more short, we'll be very, very patient. We didn't get the reload on Intel, but we did get the reload on Apple. So now Apple's trying to go back upside. So I'm going to give this, you know, we cashed out already, and this is what I was sort of trying to get at there, is you're right until you're not, and we could be wrong um, here on Apple. So you got to take the profit when you see the profit. And we took that, but we'll reload it. VWAP's here at 25, we'll give it to that, and then we'll give it up to 170.50 because we want to stay with this trade. It's just we got to make sure that we have the right prices on board, right? We don't just um, trade things, you know, willy-nilly. So we'll wait for 170 and change. I am, oh, I'm not actually even up there as I say that, I guess because we got filled. So we're going to go to 170.23 or so, see if we get something in and around that VWAP. That's actually a little bit lower than that, so let's go a little bit better. Um, and then we'll wait to see if we get that fill, and then we'll wait for 170.50 to be wrong. I, I, I like the short here. Look at this move up in the NASDAQ. So that's something to be considered in order to get more short. But again, be, be able to get out of the way if something happens. And video all the way down to 936, man. Shout out to Chef Joe. Shout out to everybody that's out there trading today because NVIDIA, always a great tool to, to, to hit, right? I mean, huge move off the open from 940 up to 950, basically, all the way back to 935 and now trying to take out those highs again. So if there's any name you're going to be long, I would say it's Micron off of a great report last week. Great shoot up on Micron today. Look at it back to 114. That's where VWAP is. I think you want to hold it until you can get back below that level. That's Micron. And then the other name, of course, that we want to look to short would be AMD. Because again, you have that same news. But you see what's happening to Intel. Intel's going back to the upside. So what was a good trade at one point could easily get soured. And we don't want to hold it past any of these pre-market levels. So 41.30, and we are gone on Intel, and we will admit that mistake. Uh, well, it's not a mistake. We're up on it. But we will admit not getting out of all of it. And we're going to wait right now to see if we can get some more in and around 20, and then use 30 as our out. So we're going to be as patient as we can be with Intel uh, OB trying to get better prices.
Yeah, same. I think uh, I think I, I got to be a little patient here. If it stops me out, it stops me out. But I'm more than willing to get those better prices. We were talking about that 141, uh, sorry, that 41 half, uh, and uh, we couldn't quite get up there. But uh, yeah, you had some solid shorts on the uh, on those pops into into that VWAP area on Intel, and I like the way you kind of churned it out as well. Kind of uh, you know getting short at the highs. And then buying yeah, back at the patient. lows, yeah, I gotta, I gotta pay a little bit more attention to my left over here. Um, those are some nice, nice entries. But yeah, uh, again, didn't have too many, uh, too many um, uh, tickers on my plan today. Let me just do a quick refresh of uh, what I was looking at here. I got my trade plan. Um, one of my main ones was uh, just, I guess, Intel, AMD, and Nike, and also uh, like we talked about that FedEx as well. So. Uh, did interact with uh, with Nike. Nike didn't really work out the way I was looking for, but that 95 seems like uh, it's it's a decent uh, or it's staying a little bit of a resistance. You can look left and uh, look at the chart from last week right here on Nike. You can see that some strong selling. So it do, it would seem as if uh, that selling still is still persistent in and around that 95 area as of right now. So maybe potential to switch, but uh, I will be a little bit more patient. Wait for some of the action to kind of come in. There we go, we get stopped out on that uh, Intel push. All right, that's perfectly fine. We kind of will come back to it if and when we get, it gets to that price that we liked, maybe I should be just waiting for that 41 half to see what we do there. Yeah, so same thing here kind of with, um, with Lucid as we're just back to some of those highs again here. So something to look out for. Uh, okay, here goes Apple. Where did we say we were going to get out at 50? So we got to make sure because now the market's going here. It looks like that sell-off, and we talked about this, right? Could potentially have been short-lived um, a little bit there as we were un very, very uncertain um, of what this EU regulator and all this new um, sort of talk here would be because Apple's already been hit uh, over the last little while. Um, now we're short at 10s. We're going to put a stop in at 170.50. Um, if we break higher than that, then we're just going to get out. Um, and then just like I said, man, uh, not be too happy with the way that this trade eventually worked out for us, but we're still here. So um, we'll still stay, stay here and see if we can win. So Apple, we're still in that short at 170.50. We've got enough shares now to, to not really worry about this. If it goes down, great. If it doesn't, then um, yeah, we have our stop and it won't be very nice. Okay, so that's that. Intel does come back. Up. We just have a reload just now on this name. The shorts don't look to be right uh, as the market is trying to go back into VWAP right now and look for some of these sort of pre-market highs. So we've talked about some of these levels breaking. You don't want to be caught on the wrong side. There we go. Now we've got Intel loaded up. What's up, Adara? This part of the show brought to you by VinFast. VinFast ignites a new era of electric mobility at the Bangkok International Motor Show 2024. With our full spectrum of electric vehicles making their Southeast Asia debut, we're steering Thailand into a sustainable future. Experience our range from the versatile F VF3 to the luxurious VF9, all designed with Thai drivers in mind. Be part of our official launch in Thailand's vibrant market and witness the future of smart green transportation March 27th to April 7th. VinFast, driving the future today. Okay. Uh, just, just a quick update, I'll throw it to Obi because you guys have heard me way too much. Um, so we only got some out there. Intel, for some reason, just dropped into the early teens there. And we got some out 12s and 11s there. Uh, sorry, 15s and 11s and 12s. So some out there as we get ready no, okay. uh, yeah, to yeah, rock and roll right now with uh, Intel. So hopefully we can catch some of those bids. Apple's trying to work lower as well. So again, nice move up to VWAP on the futures. Let's see if we can fade some of these levels. Uh, we'll go to Adair and then back to Obi. Yeah, keep an eye on Foot Locker here, guys. FL, this one did get that upgrade from Evercore ISI. I mentioned earlier, upgrade to outperform and the price target increase up about 10% now in pretty strong volume, FL, guys. All right, Foot Locker. There's some strength on, uh, on Intel. Oh boy, was that 95 oh boy, a yeah. great place to sell uh, on Nike. A little bit offside on that one, I was for sure. Um, but yeah, beautiful, beautiful kind of uh, flush happening. A little bit of, uh, more of the same, right? Um, more of the same. I do have to maybe uh, consider keeping it, keeping it a little bit more simple there. Sellers, sellers, what, is, what do we do when we come back in? Be a little patient to see what we do. Let it pop into the 95. Let, it, let me see if we can actually hold before getting involved. 
a little anticipatory on these entries here, but it seems like that selling coming right back in. So what's the next level here? Uh, potentially in that 92, uh, 92 area, if that 95 can come back in, uh, who knows? But we are selling quite aggressively and kind of a little bit of continuation on earnings day two on, uh, on Nike. Uh, 91.27 on the ask here on uh, on intel so you know what like we said i'm or like i said i'm gonna i'm gonna wait for that uh, uh that level to come in be a little bit more patient we're only about uh 20 pennies away from that 41 half not really seeing anything too crazy there maybe some size at that uh 41 30 but nothing too uh too crazy i want to see a few more or maybe some size maybe oh, some uh, some reserve let's see some action going on but that bounce on the es and nq that was absolutely wild there sean we are recovering we've kind of backed through that opening price as well go on here. the futures and that aggressive buying coming right back in so uh, i am looking at oh yeah take a look at nvidia nvidia to the, nvidia really strong to the upside we are breaking out of that 947 and change what is that 947 78 high from friday and a pre-market high of uh what is this 954.29 so we've broken both those prices as of right now in uh nvidia raging to the upside there and like i said that could definitely have an effect on intel and amd because we were looking at them uh for that in play news to play off of and uh, yeah take a look at that amd as well 172 uh and change i was looking to get uh, get a little Down. short okay. here um uh, below, below, potentially below some of these levels, and never really gave you that opportunity. Um, Intel a little bit, uh, a little bit more enticing, but yeah, lick grab the pre-market lows, and uh, I think I kind of reconsider, reconsidering this out here. If we, if I see it lick grab those lows, that's information, and I can be using that information to kind of uh, readjust that potential stop there. Uh, as it, when you do lick, or if if I see that lick grab of pre-market lows. Potential for making that range, I think, maybe potentially, in my opinion, is uh, increases in, in the short term. So we did kind of do that. And plus, we got that tailwind as well. That's definitely going to do it for you. And uh, with NVIDIA blasting to the upside, I think I'll be a little bit more patient to see how far Intel can really get here. AMD as well. Uh, AMD 177 coming in. So closing price last week was that in and around that 180 and we flush off of that in the pre-market. We're getting a little bit of that gap uh, to be filled. Low of previous day was at 75, so we're way past that. We're, one, we're trading 177s on the AMD. So Intel, a little bit of a pullback, but like I said, I'm gonna be a little bit more patient here to see what we do in and around these levels. Let some price action build up. Let's see some ranges. Let's see some uh, trends potentially, but we will stay a little bit more patient. Yeah, so we actually got stopped out of 75% of that trade with Intel. We'll see if, I mean, we could still be positive on this, obviously. Uh, but yeah, it did, it did break that 30, and we wanted to get out uh, as we were sitting there watching some of those levels come through on some of these other names. But there goes, I know you just talked about AMD, so I didn't actually write down a level uh, for these guys, but it looks like the Intel level's held, and it looks like Apple is going to be just that stud uh, that we wanted it to be. This one did not break, so it's a green day uh, for us, but let's check in on Boeing. I mean, I'm, I'm not upset about Lucid. Boeing's breaking 190 right now, so again, that long at 192, we tried, and then we got lost 50 cents on that one almost immediately. We, we talked about, actually came back for us and actually put us in the money. Uh, but then here's the drop down on that one, still sick as well, uh, is Boeing. So that's to the downside. And then ARM, yeah, a lot of people talking about ARM, man. Yeah, ARM. Uh, cool. Yeah, 141 and change. That was actually you and I uh, a couple times to discuss ARM. Uh, yeah, 150, I mean, I don't know. I don't think this is worth shorting at all right now. Any fade back into VWAP would be the, be the thing for me. The NASDAQ's still down, though, and still at these pre-market levels. I'm actually looking for a short until we take these out. So, like, until we can basically get above 18.5, I still think I like the short. And we, we know some names that we want to get involved with. We just got to find them. Um, and we just got to find the right opportunities for that. We were talking about fading Google earlier. Let's just see if that is the case again here today, if that's working for us. Uh, not for us, but for anybody that's trying 
trying to fade Google, so that's, again, been the right name. Um, fading Apple and Google both have worked out, especially Apple, but this Google would have been beautiful at that 150 level. So maybe a pushback to VWAP here at 149 and change gets us that short. But if this is going to the downside, then let's just continue to watch out to see what Apple can do as that's making a move all the way back up again. So yeah, pretty uh, up and down morning here. It's actually, OB, it's only 9.58. So there's lots of time left. Let's go over to the desk. There's an update here for Fisker, still halted, but I'm seeing around 9.50, according to Reuters, Fisker saying that they did receive notice from that large automaker they were supposedly in communication with to receive funding from or for potential transaction, and the automaker has terminated negotiations because Fisker was unable to uh, meet now because of this uh, discussion. They're closing addition with their financing commitment and term sheet. So now they're saying they're intending to do engagement discussions regarding waiver of closing condition and they're continuing to evaluate strategic alternatives. So basically, repetition is some of the same stuff that we were already uh, hearing here for FSR with regards to their termination of their deal with that automaker, guys. All right, thank you. Uh, what else do you want? Oh, you're in nothing right now? No, nothing yeah. right now. Uh, still, well, maybe if there's any, is there anything you're looking at? Because yeah, I'm, I'm still like watching at all-time highs here. right now at 960. Yeah, I'm, so I'm watching that. Nvidia as well. I'm looking for that, uh, looking for it to kind of start, maybe potentially start slowing down there. Um, and uh, Intel as well. Intel did get uh, pretty close. We got to 4134s. Uh, not quite that 41 half just yet. But uh, yeah, still being a little bit more patient here. Oh boy, that 95, it's coming in. It's coming in pretty strong there. What was that low on Nike? Let's look back at that. That low from previous day on Nike, 91.73. So quite a ways, quite a ways away from, uh, from that low. And we, strong wick on that first 15 minute candle as well here, as you guys can, uh, as you guys can see on this one. So a bit of a, a, bit of a double, uh, I don't know about a double top, but like we, you can see these tops from previous day, we did reject that quite strong, uh, quite uh, in a strong way off of that wick on the first 15 minute candle, second 15 minute strong selling to the downside. So let's see where this one will get to on Nike. But yeah, let us know in the chat what, you, what else you guys are trading. I know SMCI is going, I know Nvidia is going. Are you guys involved with those? AMD as oh, well. Yes, I know sir. Arm is moving. And uh, as Thank well you, as. Uh, we have happening now, and then we'll come back with Randy. All right. We just got some numbers here. 10 a.m. new home sales coming in. Actual 662,000, so slightly lower than the consensus and forecast here of 0.67, so about 675. Uh, thousand here for both the consensus and the forecast. New home sales coming in also lower than expected, negative 0.3% versus the forecast of positive 3%. So a bit of a move down there for uh, compared to the consensus here for new home sales month over month. The SPY itself still trading in a bit of a range, slightly down on the day, it's the SPY here, and lots of stocks making individual moves today as we enter this shortened holiday, shortened trading week, including uh, United Airlines, UAL. We also have Boeing on watch with regards to some management shakeups, but UAL down about 6% after Bloomberg reported that the FAA is considering some more oversight into United Airlines, including curbing some new routes amid some safety concerns. So big move to the downside for UAL. Also worth watching GME falling back a little bit here, but GameStop still up about 8% along with a lot of these other heavily shorted names. GameStop also has a catalyst in the form of earnings tomorrow after close. So keep an eye on all these short float names, including GME guys. We're in another short flow name here, and hey, what's up, Randy? Randy's here as well, guys. Uh, we are in Rivian. I just wanted to check out what Rivian short flow was as we get printed again on, yeah, so Rivian's only 18% right now, so um, we'll take that short here on Rivian. Randy, we had a good little uh, long on Lucid earlier. Uh, we bought that $3 dip. We sort of talked about that, and that was a good Seems to be, anyways, uh, a good play. You never know. We got out of that one real quick. But then the news of the day, Randy, I don't know. Uh, you tell me what you want to talk about. But it looks like Fisker, that major automotive company here, pulling away, um, not being able to get the finance to help out poor Fisker. Yeah, we talked about this on Friday. And what have we seen this morning? We're seeing lots of consolidation. I mean, you know, Lucid getting saved with another billion dollar infusion. And yep. Fisker, I mean, it's a top Apple market, going folks. down. It, it's. You know, I think this we knew this was coming. Yeah. Uh, there's lots of competition now. This wasn't where we were five years ago. You're uh, telling me I'm going to lose my $300 I put into this thing? That's well, I still have that ocean reservation. Do you want to buy it? 
Yeah. Can you pay me three hundred dollars to take it off of you, so then you don't have to have a blemish on your account, uh, like I, as if this guy actually got that? You know. We uh, thought there was potential there, right? I liked it. I liked the initial look of the Fisker. I don't think there's a problem with the look of the car. No. I don't think there's a problem with any of the looks of any of these cars. It's what, just a matter of production, like right? We talked about it on Friday. It's excellence and execution. There's still value to the platform. They right. have customers, they have, you know, parts and service still need to be a thing. If somebody doesn't step in and, and take this package, then, you know, it, it is what it is. We, it's unfortunate. I, I thought um, it was a great product at the launch, but you've got to carry on. Uh, I, I agree 100% uh, with everything there. Uh, Randy, I'm going to have to get you in, in a couple minutes because right now Apple is starting to go to the downside and that one is a banger right there on a reloaded position for us on Apple. So we stay the course here. We grab that Apple. Thank you, Randy, uh, for all that and thanks for the cup of joe for sure. Um, that's Randy, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we saw him on Friday. Man, what a great job. I mean, just showing the diversity right there, you know, making me look foolish uh, on Friday. People think this is a hard job and this guy just sits down there and basically takes my job away for me so thanks randy for that one uh but we love randy on the show that is for damn sure and we also love to spin some of this too obi money, money, money. there it is uh it is apple and down she goes probably like jake paul i think mike tyson just hits that guy with one and bang it's like the dallas cowboys you know the dallas cowboys came out in that first quarter they were like yeah baby we're at home we have the best record we're the best and then it was what 28 nothing at halftime will that happen to jake paul yes or no see i i don't i don't really i don't really watch uh watch jake yeah, yeah, paul yeah, yeah, or yeah, like yeah. or boxing but i did i did kind of hear um uh hear about that and i was like yeah okay are the, you gonna be watching the, the, the dude's on probably gonna get clocked but, free, uh, free on Netflix. Really? I don't know. I'll may, may, maybe, maybe I'll throw. Maybe I'll throw July twenty fourth. We'll okay. Maybe it's asking me in my ear when. I think. I think. Uh, I think the event's definitely, definitely a lot of uh, a lot of hype. Uh, that's kind of understandable, and a lot of people want to see that. I like Tyson back in the ring. I um, like Jake Paul. I mean, what he's done for boxing is. I mean, he's getting all these guys. I, I don't. Paid. I, I honestly don't don't know. You ever watch I, UFC? No. Okay. Not really. He's basically he's paid these guys like basically. He just knocks people out for fun. But the idea is, is that these guys are getting paid. And he's also started this huge female push for boxing as well. It's getting all these female boxers really? paid as well. Okay. So it's just, it's been a, you know, whether or not, if, if you're like, you never want to see like a Disney kid like Jake Paul beat up some of these heroes. <laughs> but they're the ones signing the, the paperwork, yeah. you know, and it's, it's made a difference to some of these guys. You know, so that's he's, nice. he's changing the industry is what you're saying. Yeah, what's his sense. name? The guy from UFC. Um, the, smoke, the guy was smoking. He just fought him. I can't, Diaz. Okay. He got his highest. So he was in UFC for like Nate, 20, Nate Diaz? Yeah, I've heard 25 the name, yeah. years or something like that. And he got his highest pay by far for fighting five minutes in the ring with Jake Paul. Wow. And he did really well, too. I don't, you know, anyways. The idea is, is he's fighting kind of people out of their prime. I mean, Mike Tyson's 57 yeah. years old. Come on. You know, but it's entertaining. At the end of the day, it's entertaining. Exactly. At the end of the day, it's just entertaining. You know, people watch it's UFC it's fighters literally just, you know, beat the living crap out of each yeah. other until some guy can't even walk anymore, and then they're throwing money at that. But, you know. I, I have watched, like, UFC clips without really knowing who the fighters are. I, I think I, I've had, uh, in the past, I've had interest in, uh, in Muay Thai and, uh, and maybe, like, yeah. some Muay, Muay Baran as well. But uh, yeah, no. Um, I, mean, I, I like UFC. I think UFC is great. Yeah, no. I think I, I, I like I like mixed martial arts. Dana White's I'm more of uh, I'm more of uh, uh, I guess uh, a doer, not really a watcher. But uh, uh, I, I like I like practicing Muay Thai every now and then. I'll I'll do some shadow boxing here and there, just as like a nice little warm up to to, to keep the skills in check. How to avoid and, the uh, skills, eh? Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, I, I did. I actually did Muay Thai for for quite a while, and uh, even when I was in school. Uh, in the in the Caribbean, I had a, I had a buddy who actually brought his pads Ooh, and uh, gloves at on the first semester, and I was like, "Holy, this guy is super serious! I got to bring my my stuff next uh, next semester." And pretty much for for a couple of years, we would uh, we would uh, you know hit the pads every day so after fun, yeah. after classes and stuff. So. Um, some good practice. Got to keep that up. Got to keep the skills, you know, there. Uh, but uh, nowhere near where how how uh, how clean I was in the past practicing every day, right? But uh, yeah, no, I like uh, I like trading in that factor a little bit, you know. Um, maybe a little bit. Yeah, you gotta you gotta you gotta roll with the punches. You gotta dodge. You gotta you gotta have a good base and uh, yeah. positioning. It's positioning kind of matters. That's right? a very good combinations point. of different things. Yeah. I was thinking more about the reps. 
Oh, yeah, of course. You know, putting in yeah. those reps as well. 100%. But you're right, like getting into the right situations at the right time and not yes. finding yourself choked out by said Nate Diaz, which would, <laughs> I would be down on the mat in two seconds. Um, okay, so, uh, you know, what's been down on the mat today? Let's just stay with, you know, maybe Nate Diaz definitely probably could be a day trader uh, with the amount of risk that he takes as well. Uh, but here we go, a nice little move down for Apple. We just took some out. It's not been super aggressive at all. Um, Apple, I feel like it's just kind of doing its own thing. So, you know, we'll kind of stay away from it. You know, Intel came all the way back down and we, we, we got the rest out pretty much down here at 4111s and change. So that's going to be, it looks like for us, a decent trade here into that move. But we're now going to back away from it. It does still show me short it, but we, we do have infinitely small amount of shares because you're starting to break up. You're getting into that 4150. Let's just leave it alone, I think, for now um, on Intel. If it gives it to us, then fine. Uh, but it's going to have to get up here. Um, and try to close this gap a little bit more because the market is a little bit more aggressive, obviously, here uh, than I had thought about uh, today. So a nice little move upside. I would rather short some of these plays. But let's find a strong name um, right now because, Obi, I mean, the market's strong. Oh, yeah. Are there any longs that you may potentially be looking at I'm right now? I'm looking at... We wrote down Disney. Actually, we can look at Disney. Go ahead. I'll look at Disney. Yeah, no, I'm looking at uh, at Reddit. That uh, that 45 was quite nice on uh, on day one and day okay, two. We happen to hold that as well today. Let me just pull that uh, pull that chart up here for you guys. Or DDT. And uh, yeah, Reddit day three of IPO, you can see that, uh, you can see how that uh, 45 held, that area held quite nice on the first day. I think there was like, uh, it was like what, like four or 5,000 lots in and around there, if I remember correctly. Uh, can't even print the 45, 4505 is the low. And the next day, make a little bit of a higher low. We do kind of uh, uh, violate that, uh, that low in the pre-market a little bit. Take a look at that crazy, uh, crazy R vol, but uh, Again, I think uh, because of this calculation, it's only taking uh, taking this day. You can see that our vol is not really here, so maybe that's incorrect. I have no idea. But in terms of support resistance, Reddit is blasting to the upside. 50, that 45 hold, oh boy, and that 50, 51 coming in right now. And uh, let's see where we can go from this for this one. I do have it on watch. A little late to get that 45 as it comes in in the pre-market uh, and holds quite well and in going into the open breaking through both day one and day two, kind of uh, day two all day consolidation and day one uh, mid to end of day consolidation highs in and around that 51, is it? Yeah, just that 51 Reddit on Reddit. So uh, got that expanding volume coming in as well. Let's go down to a shorter time frame, see what this volume was up to. Yeah, look at that strong volume as you get that break through the 50. Definitely gonna be watching this one. We got 100 lots at 52 as of right now. So uh, Reddit potentially looking quite strong there. Um, and yeah, SMCI, NVIDIA, AMD, Intel as well. All of them very, very strong if you guys pull up those charts. Spider slowly climbing as well, 520 coming in. What are the lows from Friday, 521? All right, we got those on watch. NVIDIA making fresh highs as well. Oh boy, you know another one that's making highs? You tell me. Amazon. Amazon. Amazon, oh boy. Damn, hello. All right, that let, me just, uh, we, uh, let me just pull that one up. Take a look at this beast right Those here. don't stop. Okay, I wonder yeah. if it has anything to do with FedEx. FedEx had earnings yes, last week. Absolutely call. not. FedEx kind of selling off. Maybe that's why. I have no idea, but Amazon oh, but you're not picking pretty very, very guy. strong off, of, uh, off the open. Thanks, John. Um, all right, so the high is uh, 181.40. 181.40. Is uh, was it last week's oh, high? That's a great call. Yeah, no, I, I, I think we talked about this uh, last week yeah, with uh, with call. FedEx earnings coming up. Maybe you should be watching Amazon a little bit as well. And yeah, Amazon raging to the upside there. That 177, quite an interesting uh, interesting level as well in and around that 177. And we've held that just uh, um, the day before and today, making a higher low above that 177 ish area on uh, Amazon and we're pushing for some of these highs. Let's take a quick look at the weekly here. I do want to take a look at a, a higher time frame and you can see how strong this ticker is. Now, I was talking to a couple of people about this, um, about how we can potentially deal with this, what are oh, some shoot. potential this trades is, around this uh, name, but Amazon looks, rel looks pretty similar to what Meta did a few months ago, right? Look at that strong V-shaped recovery on the weekly where we break some of these highs that happened in August 21, right? October 21. So take a look at Amazon right here. 
little bit of an interesting uh, pattern, if you want to call it, a bit of a double top as well, kind of strengthening that, uh, that, uh, that level here in and around that 188.65 being the high. So we are pushing slowly but steadily back towards those highs. Let's see how far we get. But as of right now, very, very strong with the rest of the market is Amazon. Oh boy, maybe a reversion trade on board, but this market's got to cool off. Look at that pushing through that 18 half. Here's 41 halves on Intel. So, all right, so this is the level we were waiting for. This is the price we were waiting for. And uh, let's see, we got a little bit of a stack there. You can see that stacked offer. Um, uh, nothing too, too crazy, but we got 77s, 46s, uh, just in and around that uh, 41 half. So you had a stacked offer there. Um, not, really, not really big stacks, but uh, just a little bit of a stack. Maybe it didn't really happen uh, at some other places, or maybe I wasn't observing, but I wanted to look at 41 half, and there's a bit of a stack as of right now. So let's see if the market kind of pulls back. We get a little bit of tailwind on the pullback, but uh, with Intel and some of these other chip names kind of uh, raging to the upside, it was definitely chips with the dip off the open. Yeah, on. yeah, we talked about that guac. Uh, oh, nice yeah. trade there for have sure. That guac. Um, yeah, we've got some guac in our system right now as well because we're starting to get juiced up uh, guacamole style. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, with our trade here with Disney. So Disney's starting to go. We're only long here at 37s. Um, we've basically just gotten out right around here. But here goes Disney. Nice move to the upside. So here we go. Uh, Disney's starting to climb up. We talked about wanting to find some something that had some potential strength uh, in the name, and we found Disney today. So uh, pretty happy with that move. Let's just see how high it can fly from here. DIS trying to get going now again, back up to that upside. So we'll take some out. We're long at 37, good trade right there. Um, Apple still hovering around. Rivian came out at, uh, immediately. Like we bought some uh, 85, 86 is there and got out when it broke 80. So we'll take a five or six cent hit there on Rivian and just be wrong, uh, obviously, on that play. We're still not doing anything with Intel. We don't have a big trade on uh, for this. I was kind of just holding it to see if it could do something. Um, Tesla, we did have that talk when Randy was up in here uh, about Tesla for a minute. Uh, since then, straight to the downside. We wrote down 173. It looks like 175 might have been the thing. I'm always looking for a top on NVIDIA. Um, because there's so much room if this ever fails. Uh, but again, there's so much room when it wins as well. I mean, this name was 950 break was huge. If you took that 950 break, it, it didn't even come close to going against you from what I can see straight up. Now, I don't know how much of that hit you would have had to take there because it's straight up. Like, I don't know. You didn't want to short in front of that, but that candle right there on that 950 break is for 350 worth of a candle there. So nice push down, a uh, nice push up on Nvidia on that move. So just be careful with that. I think there could be something there. Disney's still 22 cents. I am looking to maybe fade this, but look where the market is. We're still so up uh, here on the NASDAQ. So, you know, potentially a little bit of a change here of pace. Uh, look to short an AMD rather than Nvidia if you think the turnaround is real. Here we go, man, 170 coming back in ASAP here, man. 170, Intel's climbing. We're almost getting to that 42 level. We're going to be shorting in and around 42 bucks on Intel, no matter what happens, because I, I just don't think we go positive on Intel today. So here we go, man. AMD really super smoking right now. Yeah, so uh, I did get a little short there uh, with that with that one for uh, with that 41 half ish area, but uh, yeah, I think I think that uh, if it can get up to that 42, I think it's definitely worth a look up there. In, uh, Nike. Pushing, continuing that push to the downside here. We said that, uh, that what was that low again? 92, 91.73 from Friday as of right now. And uh, continuation off of that initial strong 15 minute wick. We did continue uh, very, uh, very well rejecting VWAP as well. Uh, let's take a quick look at the five minute chart here. So you can see that we, we attempted to push that 95. VWAP comes in and we break that pre-market low as well through that 94. So definitely some strong selling off of some of those Friday highs on Nike. Um, and uh, I'm patiently waiting for this, uh, for this Amazon as well, looking interesting here, boom, 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 boom. 
very nice, strong trend. I'm sure if you could throw up a, throw up a moving average on this one, it is quite tight to, to, the, to, that, to that price. Very, very aggressive bidding there uh, as of right now. Let's take a quick look at what else is aggressively bidding here. We've got NVIDIA, of course. Um, not really uh, Softy or uh, Google. Google and Softy not really showing or reflecting that kind of action there. Um, I know I'm forgetting a couple of uh, larger constituents as well. But uh, uh, I think some of these names that I'm watching right now, I think, are just, uh, just enough to keep my concentration on. Let me know what you guys are watching in, uh, in the chat there. I know people are watching AMD, of course. Um, let us know. Okay, so uh, uh, Phony Baloney saying, Obi, please talk coin. All right, we can talk some coin right now. Yeah, get over on Pull up some yeah. coin. Uh, yeah, we, we sure got it again. Oh, wow, damn. Look at that, Sean. Holy. <laughs> What's, oh, crypto's at 69. Damn. Dude. All right. Oh so my God. We clearly, don't get any, clearly, I had no. no idea. I had no idea. Yeah, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm not watching. I'm not really no watching idea. crypto today no. with AMD and Intel. And then, uh, yeah, Bitcoin. Oh, let's, let's pull that out. I need more screens. Uh, no, I'm joking. Um, is it is it true? The more screens, the more profits. I've heard these. Yes. I've heard these rumors. But uh, yes. And on that <laughs> note, I have all these screens to sell you immediately. <laughs> like, you know, they may be a little high price, but. If you if if you buy one from me, yeah. your profits will most likely increase. Yes. Okay. So there's a there's a positive correlation to They're screens very versus so, but You have to buy it from me. Huh. You have to buy okay. the screens from me. All right. Um, yes. And if you believe that, then that's uh, all right. So we had a nice move up there for Disney. It got right back to 73. So a little bit of a takeout there. We're at 37. So that was 40 cents. Um, and Disney right now isn't doing much. So you got to take advantage when it pops up. So watch out for that pop again uh, there on Disney. We got a pop up on um, Intel. So we shorted it um, against 60 again. We saw the movement in the market. Um, and I was just thinking like, look, if I'm just going to sit there and say, we're going to look for an NVIDIA possible top, then let's just short Intel um, and see if that works. Because if, if the space pulls back, I would rather stop guessing about maybe Intel will be weak or NVIDIA will be weak on a pullback, which obviously is leading everything. I still think NVIDIA, and again, we had talked about this with numerous guests on the show, um, and that is, is that NVIDIA has a magnitude and that's a thousand. So until you get up to a thousand, I don't know if it's worth shorting this name at all. Um, let's just stick with the names that we're more comfortable with, including Disney, um, Intel, and everything else. Uh, so there it goes. We'll take it out there at 56 on Disney. Um, NVIDIA is still doing its thing. Intel hopefully will crack in and we'll be able to take profit on that. Looks like our Boeing trade OBs held up okay off 190, uh, but we're not in it. We were along at 192 and got out when it first broke. So that's... That's a potential level there. I just want to look at the sticky note to make sure we're not missing anything. Tesla, Apple, Google was really super strong. So we sort of indicated that earlier. Uh, sorry, was weak, but then it had this candle all the way back up to VWAP. We're still waiting for a 149 or so take on that. Apple's still only 20 cents in the pocket. Not really doing a whole heck of a lot. We got to wait for that. And then someone just said to me, Lucid reload time. I mean, this was, we've really done well to get out of there. I did not put another reload down here. Um, if anything, maybe Coinbase needs to be looked at, man. That's a pretty nice move um, in crypto. Coinbase up 9% today and still going. Like, um, absolutely unbelievable move back to the upside for Coinbase. Maybe Adara, I don't know if there's news specifically about Coinbase. I don't think there is. So I would say this is just a monster crypto story as crypto now taking out 69. Uh, crypto is real and it's fabulous, guys. Let's go back over to the desk. I haven't seen anything specifically on Coinbase, but I will take a look when I get back to the desk. Right now, though, the IWM kind of consolidating within a range here after a nice pop-up. Uh, up just under 1% on the day. So nice look here for the Russell 2000. Some individual movers here to talk about as well, including Valco Energy. EGY is the ticker for this one. This one trading higher after announcing the finalization of some of its agreements in Equatorial Guinea. But also it looks like it's been running for the last couple days here. So nice look here for EGY. We also have a move up here in XTLB. This is XTL Biopharmaceuticals. This is another one that's been on watch for the last couple of days. On Wednesday, they announced that they acquired this company, Social Proxy. So good move as well here for XTLB on no particular news for today. And last but not least here, Occugen. This one up about 20% OCGN right uh, in the late afternoon on Friday announcing that the uh, Third Circuit of Court of Appeals in Pennsylvania basically decided to dismiss some of the lawsuits against this company. So move up here, continuation play for OCGN, guys. 
Right. Thank you, Adara. OCGN. Yeah. Um, that's. Uh, I think that's a. That's a biotech, right? OCGN. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Oxygen therapy or something. So I don't know. I just said to Obi, like, what the heck just happened with Intel there? I got stopped out. Yeah. So did that's I. What happened? No. So did I. Because we were. What I meant was we were getting out at the mid 40s there, Obi, and then it ripped up. So we took a piece out, then we just got a piece back in, then we just got some more out at 57 again, but we're gonna stop now because this name just continues to be really aggressive to the upside, one more penny higher, and we're gonna get out of Intel. Again, remember, every time I have Intel, there it goes. Every time I have this name marked down as a number one idea, it appears to not be um, a, the best idea in the book. So we'll wait for Intel again now um, and leave it alone for now. That coin trade is absolutely monstrous. Um, this Disney trade is an absolute banger as well. We've been cooking up that one all day. So uh, that's been a good trade as well. Let's look over at Meta to see what's going on. Um, I'm gonna ch ch check back on Apple as well because that's okay, Apple's not really doing anything. Again, all these names, and I'm really glad that on the sticky note, at least we talked about like being a little cautious on some of these names early. Like it would have been a good trade, but look what we did. Like as if we just bounced on five bills flat right there. Like so stupid. Like look at that trade there for Meta. 500, it went down to $500 then went up seven bucks straight from that level right now. I mean, is that worth a short then? Now that we're up here? I don't wanna be, what time is it? It's only 10.30, we don't need to be counter trend yet. The market's up, we should probably be waiting for pullbacks on longs right now. So you mentioned Amazon was super strong, you're, oh, you're short it? <laughs> okay, so I'll change my tune on that one maybe. I, uh, again, I don't yeah, know what, what I'm doing. What are you thinking there? <laughs> yeah, no, I think uh, like, uh, okay, so we've, we've, had some, we've had some decent strength uh, off the open, view up, held. I'm looking for just for their potential, uh, potential reversion there. Um, let's see if we can uh, come back into that 18.5 as well on, uh, on the NQ. Um, but again, uh, I am also watching ARM and AI and SoundHound Reddit kind of uh, pulling back as well as of right now, but strong off the open. So got all of these on watch. NVIDIA taking a bit of a pullback after uh, post consolidation as well. So maybe that Intel short potentially coming in. Is that why you were saying, why did Intel just do that? Because yeah. of what, uh, what uh, NVIDIA has been doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think, I think maybe, I was thinking about putting my stop a little bit higher, but I'll be, I'll be patient. Let's see whether or not we actually do take a little bit of a breather from this action. AMD pulling back as well off that 180. Uh, and uh, let's see, SMCI not as much. Intel still holding and pushing right now. So again, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more interest in that Intel AMD with that catalyst. But again, the chip leader is Nvidia, and I think a lot of eyes on SMCI as well. Both tickers, which are quite, quite strong there. And uh, yeah, yeah, that 51 has a little bit of a bid on Reddit. I see 200 lots on the on the New York book there on. Um, uh, on Reddit there, uh, was it 203 lots I see at 51 as of right now, but Reddit quite strong and continuing to push up. I think, what, what was it? Uh, over here, so I was watching this, Sean, um, it go, pushing into that uh, 41 half, I did get short, and after I got short, I did observe as we were pushing this, there was a, there was a couple, uh, it, was, it was 100 and some change of lots kind of on the bid at an odd price. I think it was like in the 40s, and I was like, all right, I think it was 48. I was like, if that, if that guy fills, if that guy gets taken out, um, I'm looking to add a little bit more onto this, but price never printed him, never got to him, and he kind of just like, the price just ran away from that bid on Intel. So I am kind of uh, watching that, considering that I'm glad I kind of stopped out where I did. Could I have been a little bit wider with the stop? Sure, that's perfectly fine, but we can always get back in. I do have to work on hitting out of a stock right away. That's not really working and give it a defined level of like, okay, well, I want to be, or I am wrong past this point. Whether that's right or wrong, again, it's, it, I'm, uh, it's a work in progress. I'm still learning. I'm still trying to pick up different things. And uh, yeah, trading is a journey, Sean. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, the only news that Adara has for us is that ARC, ARC is such a fail, honestly. Uh, sold 55 million worth of coin on Friday. Good move uh, right there. I only say that because we talked about some of that wealth destruction that ARC has given um, over the years. The way Brian Shannon had a note there, in the billions of dollars all these ETFs have lost um, since inception. But it doesn't mean that they didn't make, you know, again, well known for the Tesla bull call uh, of early days and, and crypto as well. So, you know, there are some benefits right there, but there's Coinbase up 10% uh, and continuously going, oh man. 
Obi, Obi, Obi. Well, I mean, I don't know what we want to do right now. So that's why I'm sort of like thinking about trades. Mm -hmm. I mean, that 180 was so good for... AMD? AMD. And yeah, yeah, I'm watching. I think, uh, here's, watching here's the it thing. It doesn't do anything because we're, we're... It can still consolidate. It can still show you that like sellers are in. Do you think like if we wait a little bit longer, maybe we're not, we won't get the top, right. but we can get Definitely a not. more confirmed action with a, with a slightly lower price for that pullback? What do you, what yeah, I think your you're right. I mean, at this point, we have to be... We, we, we've been what strong we right off the have. open, right? So um, I'm like, I, for me, I'm just like, yeah. all right, let, like I've been stopped out a couple times here already on Intel, and AMD does look like a great short off that 180. I think I wasn't really watching it, but uh, yeah. if sellers can kind of really show themselves that uh, they're back in control, I do want to get involved with that one strong wick on the NQ as well. I mean, I, I, no, a name that I thought was going to work oh, wow, too. Nice. Yeah, Disney just dropped. Oh, yeah, it's nice so far, but Disney just dropped in here, waiting to see about this 118 level. I don't want to lose it. Um, again, upgraded today. You know, nice, nice move. Again, trading now counter trend because market's still hanging out and we just dipped in for this one. So we have our stop on Disney. This, this trade's completely fine. I'm just more frustrated like that it just dropped there. Um, we, are, we, we got out. We talked about it having a problem there. Well, we didn't get out. We were back in now. But we talked about having a problem up there. So we did hold. A, we hold a decent amount of it. Let's just see if it can work back. We're long at 26 now, so that should tell you all you need to know. We just got a 15 fill, so let's see if it gets back up. Looks like it wants to dip back one more time. Uh, maybe the trade is just to load up Apple again. Uh, back short as you're hovering around VWAP, but that necessarily hasn't been great. We could check out some of the bank stocks today. I'm really, if there's any names out there, what's up to everybody in the chat? Um, I feel like this... I mean, NVIDIA, okay, at least this is dropping in a little bit here. So there could be something about this, at least. So there goes Disney. Disney just tanked, so tanked. Just took down 118. So we'll slap a fill on the last reload there of Disney. Um, not much to do there other than wait for it. So now Disney, unfortunately, goes back down in. And the shorts that we have is not much, man. We just got Apple right now, and it's not doing anything. So... I don't know. The market just got back up. That was a very nice wick high with nice volume there as well. So potentially making a top there. What you're waiting for now is a pullback into VWAP to possibly look for some of those good long opportunities. So that's probably the best trade now. And the best long opportunities today has been crypto, which you're going to go to in a minute with Adara. We could look for that pullback or a pullback into 950 or so on NVIDIA uh, would be a play as well. So that's VWAP down here at 950. So we will look at that. But all right, let's go to Adara and try to find out what's up with, crypt with crypto. Yeah, first here, we just got a number. Uh, Dallas Fed Manufacturing Index coming in at negative 14.4, so lower than the consensus of negative 8. Also worth noting here, Fed C Cook set to start his uh, start speaking right now at 10.30, so keep an eye on comments from Fed Cook. I will let you guys know if I hear anything. In terms of crypto, we did actually have an interesting note here coming over the weekend from Goldman Sachs, basically saying that their hedge fund clients are getting more interested and more active in their crypto options for both Bitcoin and Ethereum trading. So interesting note there, in addition to retail trading interest, hedge funds and institutional investors getting involved here as well. Bitcoin right now still hanging out above that 69,000 area right now, which is barely holding on to 69,000. So we haven't reclaimed uh, 70,000 quite yet, but definitely continuing on an upward trajectory. So nice look there for BTC recovering over the weekend. Bitcoin here up about 5% right now, falling just below the 69,000 level. Ethereum doing quite nicely as well, well above that 3,500 level. And a lot of these other cryptocurrencies pretty strong here too. BNB up 4.5%, Solana up almost 9%, and Cardano up about 2%. So good luck here across the board. And we are brought to you by Benzinga Pro. Sign up today for 50% off their premier news and research platform for retail traders with code TTV, capital letters. Use the link in the description to go to checkout. That's higher here. I'm going to try to short Coinbase 280 against that 52-week high of 281. So we've already made a 52-week high today of 276.38 for Coinbase. It was already brand new 52-week high. I'm going to dare it to break that again. A dare it. Okay. Um, we're going to try that right there. It looks like Lucid does make its move down. So that was a good one to get out of at least. Or at least we're right about that. Uh, they're not averaging in. And, you know, it's seen better days. Fisker, I don't... Is Fisker even open yet? No. So Fisker still halted. We'll wait to see on an open there. Maybe it does not open up. So, you know, be ready for that. You can always, um, you can always be ready for the worst. And that might be what's happening for Fisker right now. Uh, and we'll wait to see what's, what's going down with that. 
Um, what else, guys? Honestly, oh, Carvana. Um, that was one that's ninety-one bucks or something like that today. Wow! Like, talk about a break higher. We, we you and I mentioned this with Michael Noss. We talked about Carvana, yeah. short float, taking it out up four percent today. There goes CVNA. A really good trade if you got it early. GameStop was actually a mover early that we didn't look at, up to fourteen bucks. Um, nice move again. And not necessarily a big, huge short float, but they report. So GameStop comes with a report um, later on. This week, I be- let me just double check that. I believe that to be true. Uh, Post market the 26th. Yeah, so tomorrow night, we'll get a GameStop report coming through. So that, you know, could be interesting. 22% short float as that's gotten increased as well there on GameStop. Check back in on SoFi. I want to look at DraftKings. DraftKings had a nice move uh, recently due to, again, NCAA. I always think when those are the stories, it's the other way around. You want to go fade um, on those pops. But again, I... I really like the gambling space. SoFi 740, not really doing too much. We'll pass on that. Uh, quick quick spot up on DraftKings. 47, I just need the chart to load here to see what, see what we're looking at on DraftKings. Hmm. So there's, we t- I mean, we talked about it on Friday. I mean, whatever. You know, to have been long at the beginning of last week when NCAA started was fantastic. And then, of course, a little bit of a pushback today. So no surprise that we're starting to possibly head to the downside here in DraftKings as some of those gambling you know, the love for that get, gets back uh, through. All right, here we go. Um, can't talk too much when we have Coinbase on. We do now have Coinbase back on at 50, at uh, 80. So we're now short Coinbase at 280 flat. We just bottomed out there. Let's put a bit at 278. Here it comes back in. You know what? We have enough shares just to take a dollar if we can get it. We'll bid 279. There it is right there. How hard was that? That's a dollar right there on Coinbase. We talked about that short uh, at 280. We said we were going to do it, so we'll take a dollar right there against that high of 281. So we're out a dollar. We only took out a third. Let's see if Coinbase falls down. I do not want to be that person betting against crypto. So we have our outs, man. If that goes anywhere uh, through, then we're out. But we, we cannot not cannot not take a dollar right there. As now we're printing even more than that. So now we're printing the bid, uh, lower bid here. So nice trade so far on Coinbase to said downside. There it is. So... Finally, we got a dollar on that one. Do, now, where do we go from here? We'll find out. Uh, what about a take down here at 275? Let's see if we can put a bid. Coinbase 275 and change. See if we get that fill. See if we can make four and change. Here it is. That's two dollars right now. It's a one and it's a two dollar winner there for Coinbase as we pull it off of uh, 280. There, Obi. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm watching Decent. some of these uh, names pull back, and I pulled up uh, pulled up uh, our friend Tesla there. I saw somebody in the chat. Kind of mentioning that and uh, recovering pretty much it's uh, it's all of its action on the day strong open uh, for that Tesla we were talking about kind of not not really having eyes on this name as it is or as it was kind of uh, in between a little bit of a level but yeah to look at that we talked about that Friday kind of high and that low and that uh, bit of a shelf that uh, on that high 171s and look at that blast off through that 171 oh boy right boy. into 175s I like that level um, and uh, pushing right back down into that 170 so a little back through opening uh, price potentially coming in where is that opening price you may ask it's at 168.79. So, all right. So, below VWAP right now. Let's see if VWAP, if pops into VWAP, stay a little heavy. Let's see if some of this, some of these. Uh, look at this consolidation high had a strong reaction. Let's see if we get any reaction with that consolidation low, which happens to also confluence with that day low and opening price as of right now on Tesla in and around that 168 and some change. 168.70s ish is what I'm seeing right now. So, uh, little uh, couple tries there. Third time's a charm. I guess on Intel is this my third time or yeah it is my third oh, time falling. and it's finally falling yeah with that with that Nvidia kind of coming in and something else I did notice there Sean was take a look at arm I did have arm on watch arm kind of giving back a decent chunk but Look at that low right there, that 138. We are making a relatively higher low off of that 138. I was not watching the tape. I am not watching the tape on ARM, but this is looking like some interesting price action here. Look, it's doing some more of all as well. Um, 
bit of a bit of a hold above some previous uh, previous prices as well. Look at this. When was the last time we were printing these prices? It was on the 8th of March. So uh, let's see if we, whether or not we hold this 138. That initial morning move off of VWAP seems like it held quite well. Was not involved. Lots of trades on the board, it would seem. And here comes an Amazon. Where can I get a little bit bigger on this one? That's what I'm thinking right now. I have no idea. But I think this 180, what, what we do with this 180, let's, uh, let's try to see 180 half as well. Um, take a look at that NQ, still pushing it. We push right back off of that 18 half. So let's see where we go from there. Uh, Intel still kind of just chopping around this price area here. So I don't know if it's working just yet, but we did get a little bit of a pullback. I might be a little premature on that one. On, uh, on Intel, as it is kind of still holding a bit of a uh, bit of trend. Let me pull it up and show you guys right here. Uh, I do have it on some other charts uh, with some uh, charting on it, but uh, I'll take a, I'll show you guys on this chart over here. So right here is still still within trend, right? Still within trend off the open. We had this little bit of a little bit of a chop area here. What was this? 41 and some change to 40, 40 70s. And we've broken above that. Still not really, get, still didn't really get past these uh, pre-market highs, but VWAP held, VWAP held from the highs, uh, uh, VWAP held from, uh, sorry, price held from above VWAP. So price held on top of VWAP, and we are trending to the upside right now on Intel. So I think, uh, I don't know if third time, the third time is, is a charm indeed, but we will find out. It is well within trend uh, as of right now, so we could very well be wrong on this name. But uh, let's see what the NQ and the ES are doing here. I know SPY kind of took a little bit of a pullback off that 520, 5, uh, 521, couldn't really test. We did make a relatively lower, oh, hello. This, that's interesting. Okay, so let me pull up the SPY. Let's take a look at this together here. Um, all right, so a little bit of a higher time frame. Let's pull up a 30. Um, Come on, yeah, look at that. So please. over the past few days, we've just been making relatively higher, uh, lower lows and lower highs here on the SPY uh, off of this 524 high there. Interesting. So a little bit of a maybe potentially trend. It's only been there for two days. Let's see what we have. Uh, what what we have in terms of action if and when we kind of get back towards these highs here. So let me just throw this in here, just a quick line, just to define a little bit of a trend. So how high can we go? 521 and a half roughly. Let's see what we do in and around there. Let's see if, if, uh, if the spider kind of uh, follows that trend. If not, who knows, but uh, yeah, let's, I'm gonna test that out right now. Amazon looking like it wants that VWAP. As of right now, that retest of that uh, 180.35 might've been a nice place to get in. I was looking for that 180 half, but let's let, uh, I'm gonna let it consolidate a little bit there and uh, maybe look for potential areas to push a little bit more into this trade here. Um, I, I, don't have, I don't have enough, but uh, something I guess I'm gonna put some more focus on I'll let you guys know right after we get back from Madeira. I put more intel. A little bit of a mixed look here for the S&P 500 here on the sector watch. Lots of strength in energy minerals. A lot of oil prices going higher, and so we have a lot of these energy names pretty strong. Lots of weakness here in consumers. A commercial services, though, pretty weak. Transportation weak across the board with the exception of Uber. And consumer services, interestingly, pretty mixed to weak, but Disney standing out here after that upgrade from Barclays and some positive sentiment ahead of its shareholder vote on April 3rd with the ongoing Nelson Peltz and Trian debacle. So it'll be really interesting to see how that resolves. Nice move up for DIS. Finance pretty mixed, health technology pretty mixed as well here. Producer manufacturing pretty mixed to flat, but of course we do have to talk about these tech sectors. NVIDIA, SMCI both pretty strong here in electronic technology. SMCI getting an upgrade from, or at price, uh, initiation with from JP Morgan, so nice look there as well. But of course, it's worth noting some of the weakness in Meta, Google, and Apple after the European Commission decides to look into antitrust investigations for those companies. So, so definitely some big tech on watch to the downside here, guys. Okay, Coinbase, uh, just a really quick talk here about Coinbase because it's starting to get me upset. Um, yeah, so here we go. So Coinbase is trying to make this move uh, and it keeps on bouncing out 278. So I'm, you know, have this trade on and it's been a good trade. So I'm not upset with it. It's just, it keeps on bouncing at 278 and I don't want to give it up because crypto right here at 69 is interesting to me because it's such a close 
to such a psychological level of 70 that maybe we get that. Okay, here we go. So all I need to do is talk about it. Okay, nice move down here um, in Coinbase. I'm bidding 276.50. You can see we've changed now our area of concern um, with where Coinbase is. We thought that we could get a little bit of a dump into 275, but for right now, we're just going to hold forward here and see if this is the trade for us down at, I mean, 277, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, let's just put something on the bid. Hopefully we get run over there. We're now bidding into the 22 area, so we're right there on NASDAQ. Hopefully we'll get that fill, and then there it is. So did we just get it? Yes, we did. So there, let's face slap it up, Obi. That's $3. Uh, we'll take 270 right there and just hope that uh, it can get a little bit better for us. Uh, AMD, so now... Okay, so we're short AMD, but I, I, I'm not going to be short past like this 180.30. That's already that wick high. I just want to be short this to see. Okay, so here we go. Um, let's take a little bit of profit. We're short exactly at 50. It just went into the 20s. Let's bid here at 32. Oh, no. Um, and then, like I said, what, we're, what I'm trying to do here is take a little bit of profit on this kind of a scalp. We are short with you on Intel. Again, Intel numerous times the charm. Let's see if it can stay there. There's a bid there. There we go. So we'll face slap it out as we take some profit now. We're starting to really get going here, man. This is going to be a good, good hopefully afternoon uh, and day for us. As Coinbase, we've already taken a dollar, then $3 on that. So that's going to be a good win for us. And then now we'll just have to wait to see if AMD can give it to us. So again, 180.30 is the stopping spot. We're just trying to get in and out of a little bit here as the NASDAQ tries to figure out what it wants to do. And then NVIDIA, I mean, I would still like the shot to see at 9.50. So that's a VWAP trade there. But if NVIDIA gets down to 950, then man, this AMD trade will, should be cooking at that point. So hopefully we can get back into there and we'll have a decision to make when they all come back into VWAP. But for me, if we can get a 78 fill or even here, man, 179 flat would be good. 178.60 would be great. So try not to count the chickens before they hatch here. But if AMD gets a pull down, I really like it to give it up. So Apple's not giving it up. Oh, and on that note, we took another piece out on Apple when it just dipped down in there. Now we have 10% left. So Apple went down into 170 again. Look at it starting to moon now a bit. So we're going to have to get out of Apple if it goes too much higher than this because we only have a little piece left and we're not holding this past 170.50. So let's just hold out for Apple. If it can come back in into 40s, 35s, then we'll take that short. But for right now, brand new position and it's starting to cook a little bit here with AMD um, and Intel. So those are the two new ones. And then Coinbase, good out for us there at 277 and change. So, so far, so good as we get ready to uh, talk about what's for lunch when you're done there, Obi. Yeah, I'm, I'm watching this Intel here, kind of bidding right back up. So yeah, it is holding trend as of right now. I do kind of want to uh, respect that a little bit here. Reddit pulling back as well, uh, just, a, just a tad bit um, back into towards its VWAP. Where is VWAP? I have it at 49.38 on the 15 minute chart there. On, uh, on Reddit. So let's see what we do in and around that $50 area. I did miss out on that 45 bid. It would seem that uh, that's, a, that's a nice place to potentially get involved or it has been over the past few days and uh, should have been watching in the pre-market. But uh, yeah, it's uh, market taking a, taking a little bit of a, of a slowdown here. You can see uh, long, uh, pretty long extended bars and then rips right back up to the upside and then we print, we start printing a little bit more muted bars. Uh, in in and around on top of this 18 half. So let's see where we go from there. A little bit of a pullback there on uh, on the ES as well. So I'm watching a few tickers. Let me know what you guys are watching. Nvidia taking a little bit of a curl, making that uh, it is bro it, it is I think in my opinion it's technically broken that uh, that morning trend right now. Let's see if we can catch a bit of a bid in and around VWAP. And uh, if down. this market kind of pushes right back through that 18 half, I think we'll have the right kind of tailwind to see that. Uh, potentially come into uh, fruition there, but I'm patiently waiting. I'll try to take what the market will give me. And uh, going back to what I was saying earlier, I'm going to be trying to work a little. I'm, I know I was working on this a little bit with a lot more focus uh, earlier, but I'm going to go back to kind of uh, being focused on consistency, putting the right reps in, and really kind of cleaning up my uh, cleaning up my playbook. Because uh, I thought I was being specific, but nowhere specific enough, uh, it would seem. And I do have to kind of revamp that system a little bit here. But uh, um, 
Amazon could have definitely taken a little, taken that uh, breakdown a little bit earlier on that ad. I think I did add it quite a little aggressively, but that's that's fine. We'll see how that kind of works out. I'm wait, patiently waiting for some of these other names to kind of come in. Intel still holding ARM, uh, still holding that 138 level. Let's see what we do with that. Do we do we push lows and do we get back through the opening price there on uh, on ARM? What do we do with that? But that strong open quite quite nice and there come there here comes in nvidia hello. to the downside hello am i gonna get that uh v hello on amazon i, like I have that. no idea but uh, if the market can pull back into that 18 half maybe we'll have something on our hands here all right man we got a 50 cent winner right now let's bring the cash register a little bit let's not get too excited though we don't know where we're gonna get out here on amd we just take a 20 fill we are waiting for that flat bid uh, right now at 179. So yeah, good little call there uh, out for that. And wow, I mean, we'll try again at 281, but I'm not trying I, just against that high of 282. But right now, I mean, Coinbase just came all the way back up. So we're playing with house money, but uh, it doesn't feel that way when it's doing these kind of moves. Uh, there it is right there. There's 50 cents, man. So let's go. Let's fire them off one more time again here today as uh, there goes AMD. So another win for us there today. Apple, big trade for us, obviously off the jump. Apple just right now. Boeing was a slip up, um, but we got in and out. We followed our rules. Coinbase, I mean, choo, choo, choo. I mean, we're slapping that one today. That's a good one, man. We'll slap out Coinbase. Um, Disney, we took it, then we did it. That'll be a flatter stock. Intel will actually be down on because of our last little trade there, but that's, we're not... Intel's been fine. We'll wait for it. Lucid right now. Um, good trade. We're up on that one. And then Rivian, we got out of the way real quick on Rivian. Wow. Um, I mean, Sean, just stop believing in EV names other than Tesla, honestly. I mean, there's no freaking point uh, as all these names continue to get destroyed all over the place right now. And I mean, Rivian is just, unfortunately for all of us, um, another one of those examples there, if anybody's invested in it. I bought some of this at 11 and a quarter. Uh, might just get out. And then the one that we're gonna have to hope, hope for, a pink sheet resolution maybe is Fisker. We saw, I was a workhorse, a ride went down there to no avail, but everyone's waiting for one thing and that's for lunch. All right. So Fisker might be waiting for a nice uh, meatball sandwich somewhere below a zero, but we'll see if they get down to the pink sheets. Are you, you eat beef or not? Yeah. Yeah, you eat beef. So today might be good for you because Always. it is not a chicken dinner winner. Okay. It's not an Apple. It's not a Coinbase. It's not an AMD. These aren't chicken dinner winners today. Um, but what we have to look at today, Obi, is, yeah, man, it's beef. We've got beef. So what's beef? Me and you don't have any beef. It's always good not to have beef. Um, today, let's just look at- No, I, I asked, is it a beef thing? Is it a beef ting? Have you heard that? No. You've never heard that? No. Okay, never mind. I Damn, might be a Daniel. Little... <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, so it's, no. it's Toronto slang, I guess. It's a little bit of Toronto slang. Is it? Yeah, yeah. They keep saying, okay, Boomer, but I'm Gen X. <laughs> We've already talked about that. I mean, Boomer's super, super old. Maybe, maybe that would be like Neil and Sharif style, but I'm Gen X. Um, okay, so, no, what's that from? What's a beef ting? No, it's just like, no, 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 it's just like, yeah, there's no beef, like, you know, it's like just a slang way of saying, yeah, exactly, oh, is that, is that some beef, you know? Is there a beef going on? It's, yeah, yeah, no beef mind. for me here yet today, unless you're having it with chili. <laughs> All right. With I like beef chili. garlic bread, so... A little bit of chili there. So it's a beef ting today with some chili. Uh, as we're going back to the downside right now, <laughs> we just shorted some more um, AMD. So we will find out oh what is up with that uh, right now. Come on, AMD. We just shorted 170. Let's go to the desk. Got stopped out on Intel. Bit of a move down here on the daily candle for the DXY, and this follows a really strong last couple of weeks here for the DXY, actually having six out of the last seven days to the upside. Uh, other than this candle today, so this would be six of eight days positive if we do close red today. We did get some economic data earlier today as well. USA new home sales for February coming slightly lower than expected. And the Chicago Fed national activity for February is slightly higher than expected here. So... Uh, or slightly higher than the previous year. So interesting mixed picture there economically. We also had some comments coming in from Fed's Cook, which are also of a bit of a mixed nature here, saying that you want to, we want to make sure basically that we're not over... Uh, 
you know, we're not being too hawkish, but also, you know, if we're, if we're too dovish, there could be some issues as well. So interesting mix, mixed sentiment, basically saying there are risks to easing the policy too much too soon, but also risks to easing it too late. So not saying too much here, but we will keep an eye out if there's any other Fed comments coming from Fed's cook. We also have um, economic, we have Fed speak throughout the week as well, so we will keep an eye on what these Fed speakers have to say as we head into the rest of this shortened week, guys. All right, thank you, Adara. All right. Uh, a little stopped out on the intel. It would seem that it is holding trend. I do have to respect that. And I also have to respect my three-strike rule. Um, I am fighting the trend. So it's a little bit of a fail-safe uh, system that I've kind of uh, put into place. Sometimes I follow it. Sometimes I don't. I do have to get better at kind of uh, that discipline of following it. But you know what? Just got to take it off the screen. I'm clearly fighting trend. The, uh, the, the idea is, uh, is not working. The trend is to the upside. And NVIDIA is above VWAP. We're holding previous kind of micro consolidation that we had in that 955 area as of right now. And uh, let's see what we're doing. That 18 half, look at that bounce. Okay, well, a little bit of uh, information there. Maybe, potentially, I have no idea, but we are kind of wicking, all right. uh, wick lowing. How much time is left on this 15 minute candle? Seven minutes, it would seem. So, all right, we're about halfway there on that. Um, on that candle to print. So let's see what we do with this 18 half on the NQ. What do we got on the ES here? ES kind of, kind of just, uh, kind of just in there. All right. Well, uh, there as of market. right now, let's see if we can uh, get that view up on Amazon. I have no idea, but uh, it would seem that again, I got, I got to work on this a little bit more. It's uh, adding on to this. I think this might be a little aggressive. I know that. Uh, it, Playing the breakdown is is a decent play, decent reason to add, but I think I'd, I'd also like to develop the skill of uh, you know getting short on the on the on the pops and uh, getting involved as well because I was I was asking for too much. I'm looking for 180 halves. I'm like, all right, if it can come up, come up to 180 halves, I'll add more. But it doesn't do that. And but I do take uh, that breakdown. What is that on 88s? Okay, so I had 83, so not too too bad there. Uh, let's see if we can get that initial cover off of. Uh, into, into that VWAP right here as it comes in just a few more pennies away from that VWAP as of right now. So I gotta, I gotta slowly, uh, I gotta patiently watch this tape here uh, to see what we do in and around this 179 half on the Amazon as the NQ kind of pulls right back into that 16, uh, into that 18 half. That was a run. So, uh, okay, there, so that was pretty wild there. Um, what are you looking at, Sean? Yeah, that was Arm a Arm coming back yeah. into that 138 as well. Yeah, so we, um, whew. So we got stopped out of AMD until this happened, and now we're short again. I mean, now we got 70 cents in the money, so all is good, you know. Um, you know, what's beef is when, <laughs> forget about it. I was say when you need two gats to go to sleep, but I don't know if you know uh, those lines. You know. What's beef when you need your enemies to start your Jeep? Okay. It's, 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 there's some Biggie Smalls reference. Okay. There's actually a song called What's Beef. Okay, okay. All right. I haven't, I haven't heard a lot of his, uh, his music, but I know yeah, definitely yeah, iconic, yeah. Uh, iconic, yeah, artist iconic for dude, sure. Iconic individual right there. Um, okay, so huh, AMD, yeah, it was tough up there. I mean, we got, there's the tick out, man. We got stopped out at 181, but we put it back on uh, because you know what I did? I went right over to NVIDIA, and honestly, this wasn't doing what I thought. Like, when I got stopped out of AMD, I was like, okay. What's NVIDIA doing? And when I saw like NVIDIA pushing lower, I just punched right back in and figured that it was some sort of a liquidity grab there on AMD because I don't know. I'm not seeing any specific news regarding anything other than negativity regarding AMD and Intel. But again, nicely done to the upside. You cannot, you can't hold me down. 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 Good. Yes. Okay. All right. We've got to. I forget. Okay, all good. Um, all right, Sorry. so, all right, no, it's all good, it's all good. You know, it's fine. Um, all right, so, yeah, that's what we're doing right now, so let's watch out uh, right now. No, I will not, Chef Joe. That was funny. Uh, okay, shouting out to the podcast. Thank you, Chef Joe, uh, for listening to that. We talked about Cardi B, things okay. like that. You know who Cardi B is? I, I know who she is, Okay, yeah. good, yeah. I'm not asking, you don't need to know the lyrics or anything like that. Um, all right, so there it is, man. Uh, all right, thank you so much, Kyle Burdett. Uh, right now for the super chat. Thank you so much, Kyle, for that super chat. Um, all right, so 
we just have a very, very small piece left of Apple. We've sort of talked about this and what we're looking at right now. Apple, small piece. We will get a little bit bigger if we can get up into that 170.50. I still like to fade that. I think this AMD trade could be a real good trade. Um, I'm going to try to hold this. Maybe, maybe that was the top up there as NVIDIA losing steam. That's my only thing. If, if NVIDIA loses steam, then we have a pretty good trade with a very, very defined out. So I, I really like this trade for AMD because we have that out and we have such potential weak, not, I don't want to say weakness because there's no way NVIDIA is weak, but a breakdown level uh, at 950 if we can get there for NVIDIA. But hey, you know, that's why we're covering. We're out of half, exactly half of AMD. So let's wait to see if that one can sing for us. Coinbase is only that dollar in the money. Um, anything else? I mean, Meta, I mean, there's lots of other names. There's a potential spoofy man. On, you have a spoofy uh, man? I, there's a potential spoofy man. Someone just, uh, I think, popped up with 100, or, uh, 100 and change or 200 lots on the bid. I think it was at 58, 57 on, uh, on um, Amazon here. So I'm kind of watching that, see what we do in and around there. Um, I did have uh, the initial cover around the 50s, but if we're going to kind of bid up after seeing that. Oh, did I just get filled there? You know what? I'll just do that. I'll cancel that one. I'll take it. I was I was like ten cents below, but you know, asking for I'm still holding on to a piece there. But uh, let's see if it kind of fills. I'm not gonna I'm gonna I'm not gonna ask for too much there. Like I said, I got to work on uh, a little bit more focus on consistency and just taking what the market will give me. If it's gonna if it's gonna kind of slow down ten pennies away from from my price, I'm not gonna get too cheeky with it. I'll, I'll cover what I wanted to and uh, hold uh, a little bit of the rest there. Let's see what we do with VWAP here, here on comes, Amazon. Uh, and uh, let me just quickly kind of uh, oh, that. That's uh, great. How do you feel about? Uh, oh, okay. Wow, I would have probably gone filled, but um, that's fine. Uh, how do you feel about moving stops? Like, when when do you think stops should be? Holy, there it goes in uh, Intel to ninety. Or sorry. Yeah, we uh, got out of that. Forty-two. One, you were looking for the short at forty-two. There's one hundred sixty-eight lots sitting on that forty-two. Let me just pull it up right here, so we can potentially see where is that guy. Uh, I, I did I did see him just uh, just a second ago, but uh, all right, cool. Um, but yeah, that 42 coming in on Intel. But yeah, how do you feel about uh, moving stops? When, right. when so, do you think that should happen? When do you think you, that should be totally avoided? Great. Yeah, great question. So yeah, awesome. So what, what I think you have to move your stop is, it, okay, so it just depends on, so good question. It depends on what you're using as your stop. So when you're talking about moving your stop, I, I feel like you want to stay with it. If you're going to be shorting AMD against 181, then you want to keep it there. Mm -hmm. But like if I was long right now and looking for a stop, I, I, I'd want to use like keep checking back in on like your 50 period moving averages because like right now the 50 period moving average is right at 179.50. So that coincides with a support level and an area of possible reload or interest right there at the 50 period. So I always like to check back in on you know how the stock is breathing what some of the levels look like because even just like right now with apple you see we got stopped out there so look where the 200 period is we could have re-looked at this so like if we had reloaded into this trade right now which we had already identified that we did not we'll, we'll put our like apple's my number one stock we'll put that in our pocket and we'll deal well coinbase is my number one stock but we'll put apple in our pocket and deal with it we did not want it if it broke this 170 50. so right now if i had reloaded this short we probably would have used the 200 period as our out you know so that's i, I always think you just want to check back in on your stock to see how it's moving and see if there's any other levels of interest that maybe it came up. Because honestly, Obi, I didn't even realize the 200 period was here. Because when we looked at it before, we were all the way up here. So now we got to watch out for that. Mm -hmm. um, just hearing there's announcement, Cisco's announcing new devices. That doesn't seem to be doing anything for Cisco um, right now. And there goes AMD. So unfortunately, we have to slap a fail on our last reload there of AMD. We were in the money. We just got out just to show you how crazy this stock is and why I'm fine with this. That's a 32 out right there on AMD that we got four minutes ago before blasting up and getting us out a dollar higher than that. So a little bit of a reload there at O's. That's an O's reload, 181 flat, out on the break of 2022. So we will slip that up and get and lose on AMD. That's been, it's been real, something real for AMD today as we thought it was short. 
on some of that news, but that does not appear to be the case at all. I didn't even realize it's 11.01, Obi. So you're oh, back man. at two. Yes, sir. Uh, so are you. And so am I, apparently, yeah. <laughs> so we're back right there. We are short Coinbase right now. Watch out for that 282 high break. We break that, we're gone. Crypto's rocking. Crypto's almost, Ooh. I'm happy. I mean, here it goes, it's going to break out. I'm actually, the fact that crypto's at 70 is pretty good. Watch out for Coinbase. There it goes. See you later. One last L there on Coinbase before we go over. Obi, end of the show. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a great morning, and uh, tune in with Sharif and Adara with How to Trade. I'll let you know what it's about in a couple seconds. Take care, guys. Ciao. What is up, beautiful people? Welcome to How to Trade, formerly known as the Midday Show. That right there is a girl, Adara, and I'm Sharif. And we're going to wait for everyone to come on over from the other stream, but we already have a couple of great early birds in the chat.